My mind is a raging torrent, flooded with rivulets of thought, cascading into a waterfall of creative alternatives. Cow oh, darn it, Mr. Lamar. You use your tongue prettier than a twenty-dollar whore. Wait. I've got an idea. I I hunted, Rob. I hunted for I... Toby McGuire's dick. Do you wanna <laughs> take a life? Do you want to cross that line? Because it's a mm. long way back from hell. The following program is rated TV MAL. It contains strong language and is intended only for mature audiences. Welcome to the real BBC bagging, boarding, and chatting. That's what we do. Bagging, yeah. boarding, and cock. Whoa. And, wh and what? <laughs> cock. Oh, okay. You give me a cock. Uh, the show has changed its Cola. parameters. Uh, Coca Cola. I, I didn't get the memo on that one, but uh, as, as you're not allowed I, to drink Coca Cola, I know. Like, I've got some comics. Do not come. Do, do not come. Wow. <laughs> Gold key, Star Trek to bag and board. Getting ready to go because I've kind of got Star Trek fever. I'll admit it. Once. Yeah, I've I've been bagging and boarding all weekend. Actually, I've been moving everything to Mylar bags. Nice. All my all my gold and silver age shit is getting moved over. That's I it. Didn't sign up for a podcast with a bunch of nerds. What is this? You did <laughs> acid free boards. My light. I do the my light. Uh, they last forever. They last forever. So, um, yeah, we got a lot to talk about. MCU's dead. I mean, still. Hospice, dead. Stage four, post stage four. In a bad way, whatever. Uh, STD got canceled. Finally. Uh, but we're still getting one more season next year. <laughs> that nobody's going to watch. But they're going to do events for it as they're planning events for. <laughs> Cope events? I <can't>. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I dread to think the type of events that would hold for Star Trek Discovery, right, to be honest. Right. How many people, oh, I'd love to see, like, how many people actually show up for those. Uh, uh, God, I hope they do public events. I will do a meetup the same day across the street, and I'll see what happens. <laughs> 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 Who gets more people? Uh, yeah, and uh, Doctor Who was <clears throat> almost canceled. Actually, it was. The fact of the matter that it, it actually was. We'll talk about that. We got other, you know, there's some comic news. We're going to talk some comic stuff because of our guest. I uh, want to acknowledge last week's show was brilliant. Thanks again to Chuck Dixon. Mm. 
Graham Nolan. Uh, they're killing it, and we will have them back. I guess they're both coming back, uh, right, As? Uh, I'm trying to sort that. Okay. I'm trying to arrange that. I'm excited yeah. about their book. Like, what a brilliant idea it was. I don't. I can't believe that that hasn't really been done yet. The CGC tier that yeah. he has. That's a great idea. That. Yes, yeah. it is. And it sold two books for him for me because I bought that. And then, of course, I have to read it too. So yes. I bought an extra one. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I got the uh, slab. Then I got the um, two pack. And then for you know the ghost of Anakumbe, I got the three slabs for the three covers. And then the three covers and the Kelly Jones cover. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Got to get a Kelly Jones cover, man. Come on. So this show is here because of my co-host here. And uh, I've got an intro theme for him. If it works. All right. I'd like to introduce as no, 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 game streamer, no, 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 indiscriminate time. lover of the bobs. And I hope I won't get hit for the karaoke version. <laughs> maybe she'll explain <laughs> why there are heartaches, heartaches, <laughs> why there are tears, so sad. Love that! I love the song. Love the song. See, the the problem is every time I hear that song, I think of Ace Ventura, where he's <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's <going> young, <laughs> where he's. With a plunger on his face. I'd like to see that on TV now. <laughs> <laughs> Cancelled. <laughs> What's I, up, Baz? I've had a great day today. I've not been on the internet at all, apart from this stream. It's so <laughs> funny when you're not on the internet, how the world is a beautiful place. It you know? really is. The I had the TV the on. I was building down. some uh, CD, Blu-ray, 4K shelf in my front room. Hoping that my boards were going to come because I had a nice stack of comics to bag and board and they didn't come. Amazon not come. fucked not up come. the order. And not only are they not coming, they've said, we're going to have to refund you for this order. It's now undeliverable. What? And uh, you're going to have to reorder the order again. <laughs> Thanks. Hmm. That's so, uh, I just, yeah, I've had I, a good day today. I just got some Silver Age boards in the mail yesterday. And those are the ones that i like to go with anyway for my my comics even current comics i like the silver age boards i use standard which is mm. you can put silver age in some silver age not all and bronze age and modern the really early ones though they don't fit very well with the no, standard. no no they do not you have to get you have to get the sort of rich a little point. bit don't they because well, yeah because it's tr it's transitioning from golden to silver age. Oh my god! The size got a little smaller, a little smaller. Uh, but welcome as Hi. I, I'll bag and board. I got some toys to show off too, but we got a lot of stuff to talk about. So let's I got twenty toys downstairs. My hot dogs arrived today. Ah, you got twenty of them? Yeah, because I'm gonna. I'm going to get one of those signing pens. I'm going to sign the back and then I'm going to uh, give them away. Is going there to you go. Hot dog. Ah. Yeah, I saw people are starting to get hey. their plushies. Well, I'll look for I'm that. I'm so jealous. Twitter. I want mine. Yours is yours. It's is on the way. It's, it's on, on the way. No. If the UK is getting it, Canada's got to get it soon. Come on. Yep. Uh, hello, Mahler. What's up, hello. Long man? Oh, you know, doing good. I don't know if anyone spotted, but I started up my Resident Evil 4 playthrough today. Oh. Mm. In 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 aid of preparing for that remake when it comes out, man, Resident Evil Four is a brilliant game. It just is. There's a reason it's a king, and uh, everyone should play it if they haven't. It's um, it's almost unexpected, right? Resident Evil is such a bizarre franchise. It's filled with like completely different iterations. I was just talking with a friend. How weird is it that they are successfully running two <clears> different parts of the IP at the same time in the games, like the remake Crazy. side and then the first person shooters like size like what the fuck like you split your ip in half they are completely different kinds of games and yet there they are that's resident evil it's successful man they added, they they... added third person to resi 8 because yes. i think they're now trying to bring third person back is that I, I want to remake of veronica i really want to remake of veronica i think that's an underrated game not the best they put resident third evil. person in eight that's uh they the put DLC, third right? person in eight yeah and oh, I might have to go back and replay that. What would be weird, right, is if 
uh, Resident Evil 4 does great. Would they remake 5? It's like, I don't know. 5 is... I don't know if it's popular enough to remake 5. And then it's like, would they remake Veronica, Code Veronica X? It's like, ooh, maybe. Code Veronica, Ver that's, that, that's the announcement I'd like. Or, I think... It was either your video, Yellow Flash, or, or uh, Moore's, but remaking Resident Evil 1 like Resident Evil 4 would be... I'd love to play that. That'd be yeah, an interesting I mean. con because that one, that game, what made that game kind of, kind of scary was how tight it was in that mansion. Mm. So mm. that would be interesting if they could make that work. Well, you know what I've I've discovered is that it just looks like it would lend itself really well to a movie or TV show adaptation. They should totally do that with Resident Evil. <laughs> Why is it so hard to make a movie about <laughs> zombies in a mansion? I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> I don't know. They've literally Netflix tried like seven so awesome. times. <laughs> One day they'll get it, maybe. Maybe. Do you know what's scary? What's that? A zombie caterpillar. Terrifying. Hey, Sam, it was Sam pretty Raimi. scary in Sons of the Forest. Sam Raimi made a zombie creature. film in a fucking shack for pennies in the 80s. <laughs> Um, someone pointed out like Resident Evil 5 sold really well. It's like, yeah, I'm not talking about its sales. These are like re reputation to carry through with a remake. I'm not sure Resident Evil 5 will be seen as worth the risk. I don't know. Yeah, the, in the long run, it's not as fondly remembered. No. Resident Evil 4, on the other hand, is like, it, it, it's, it makes many people's lists of greatest games of all time, like top five. So. You know, if Resident Evil 5 had anything close to that reputation, I could see them maybe doing it. But <laughs> it'd be so funny if they just remake them up to like the boulder <laughs> they end up just remaking the first one again they're like i don't know fucking whatever <laughs> new tech new 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 world whatever just keep going i can't whatever. wait for the remake i can't i so can't excited either. it looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun and Look, i heard from the things all you guys the, do is hate things apparently the dev said they don't want to change it fundamentally they only want to tweak it where they think they can add improvements where the game was lacking maybe in history but the fact is this is a game that's just beloved down to every last floor yeah. even so is it giving the girls penises i don't think so no but you can't uh, look I, up uh, ashley's skirt anymore no you can't they made a lot of changes to the vr version i don't know if that's going <laughs> to I've heard that, yeah. The, there was like more censoring in, in the transition to VR than there was even to the Nintendo port, right? Like Nintendo left it the way it was when they ported it. For um, I'm seriously thinking getting DualSense, to, well, the VR 2, because Resident Evil 4 Remake will be on that VR. Hmm. Ooh. I'm always weary on buying Ooh. Sony add-ons because they're real fast to just dump them. Yeah, and yes. Support them. And that's a lot of Connect. money. Remember that... the PlayStation Network? I, <laughs> the... I know Connect isn't Sony, but that it just that's the same sort of thing, right? Like that they made that they pushed that so hard originally, Microsoft, and then they've just been ditched entirely. Do they do any motion shit anymore, Microsoft no. on Xbox and stuff? No, <laughs> that Microsoft camera died real quick. Yeah, it's just I guess for lack of use. Uh, Star Trek Discovery. <laughs> Star Trek Discovery. It's not the it's STD not, you think. It's not, not, thing. not actual STDs. Yeah, oh, well, yeah. It is. It's a creative STD, right? It's a creative STD. Beautiful. So, uh, wait. Oh, ha 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 ha. I've been waiting for this. Uh, I'd like to welcome our producer, X Ray. Good. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> you finally got a gong. <laughs> How proud of you. <laughs> I feel like I should do this. I don't know why. Oh, <laughs> people? Oh, no, no, no. Nice. You ruined it. <laughs> oh, no. Hi. Um, I've been addicted to Sons of the Forest. As and I played for three hours yesterday. I think he played like eight hours. And the night before that, he played like 12 hours. He's 10 and six, but close. <clears throat> <clears throat> <laughs> wow, I was making you, you added two. It's always good for a woman to add two on to anything. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. What so, you're finally done with the bigot simulator for now. Uh, for now, for, for him, yeah. I still have like eight percent left on my second playthrough. Oh, it's, I haven't uh... even got the broom yet. Oh, oh no, <laughs> well, well, yell flash, you're you're busy. It gets a symbol. Can you track what I'm doing in that? 
how many percentages you're done? 38%. Congratulations. Ash. Matches seconds. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> nice. Nice. And I'd like to welcome our special guest today, Mr. Yellow Flash. How are you? Good. Good to be here. Love What's the up, show. Brother? Love the show. Good to be here. This will probably devolve into a comic book thing in later being a comic book show. Mm. I think that's good. Uh, but I think what we should talk, I, hang on. I totally wasn't ready with this. Where's Garrett when I need him? <laughs> I was, I was busy making, I didn't get to play fun video games. I was busy making a move, making a video, not a movie. It's as long as a fucking movie. <laughs> that's what it is uh but oh damn it yellow flash you just did a video on it here i'll just go to that boop boom but don't um the marvels the marvels is in a lot of trouble a lot of trouble oh. uh, yeah since oh no since ant-man is clearly flopped right uh almost and, got and, beaten by demon slayer which is only has three showings a day because <laughs> 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 it's only have one screen usually in theaters that's it was hilarious. a million dollars short of beating ant-man that's not a knock on demon slayer i'm just saying it's only in one screen per theater usually because that's how they usually do this no it, it, uh, i'm surprised it hasn't been beaten by the the jesus movie uh, yet, yeah, which would be hilarious. Uh, well, I already have. But when you know people at Disney are having a conversation right now of like, do we release the Marvels? Do we really just do this? I mean, the only choice they have is to reshoot it to make it less shitty because <laughs> they're stuck. They're absolutely stuck. And this is how Hollywood is bleeding money now because of this uh, leaning into identity politics and you paint yourself into a corner and films that would have normally been just completely scrapped, never made uh, are now you have to like go through with it. Uh, yeah, and it's because they play this game with the investors, right? So they've announced all this shit and then they go ahead and give it release dates. Well, Marvel's is on its fifth release date, fifth five. Oh, the wildly popular captain Marvel sequel. That was renamed and then she was demoted in her own fucking movie <laughs> has been delayed five fucking times. Look, uh, they're just perfecting it, okay? That's what they're doing. I wouldn't be surprised at all if it gets delayed again. Cause as far as I know, that's what I'm trying to look for, but I can't find right now. Um almost everything's been delayed except for Secret Invasion and Loki as far as Disney plus is concerned. So the last Disney plus show we got, like that was a season that was a season long, not just a Christmas special was she Hulk, right? She Hulk. Uh, she, -Hulk. I, suppose, I suppose that counts. She Hulk. And they, and after that, after she Hulk, that big success that they absolutely back and she'll show up again. Uh, they released Ant-Man in February, which wasn't going to do it any favors. And right around that time, they delayed everything and i mean yeah. everything and what did chuck dixon say last week when the door closes on this shit it will close fast yeah it will close really fast and i think it, that's what it's doing uh because <laughs> hollywood is completely out of money completely out of money right now uh which is great uh, i wish it was uh sooner i wish they would have done this a lot sooner uh here we go california is not making it easier too because now they've have uh, if you want the tax credit, you have to have racial quota now. Did you guys all see that? I did see that. So you, if you, you want tax racist. credits, you've got to design all this from. Credit. You literally have to have your little roadmap to identity before you even start cranking out the script. Um, they were doing that with boardrooms too. Did you know that? So mm -hmm. with, with, with corporate, private corporations, mm -hmm. they were mandating, California mandates diversity in the boardroom. Why can't which, it be woman dates? Uh, I, yeah. That's a good, that's a good question. <laughs> a good Is question. today Woman's Day, by the way? Are you uh, saying tomorrow. the word gender? Oh, Isn't tomorrow? 
Is it today or tomorrow? I'm pretty sure it's tomorrow. National Whammon Day. It's National Whammon Day. Send bubs. Hang on. Send. It's liberating. I'm get rid of that. What the fuck? I hate all these fucking ads. Uh, but this is the direct, so it's not. It's good for headlines. Not exactly the most thorough place in the world. But uh, Marvel Studios' removal of promo for its 2023 MCU slate suggests certain Disney Plus shows will be delayed. They are, by the way. It officially got announced that Agatha Harkness has been delayed. Shocked. I don't even think they've started shooting that. Um, They're smart. They'd cancel it. They, yeah. I think they will. Ironheart has been delayed. Echo has been shot and de and delayed. Dude, these oh, they're going to crash and burn all these. It's so funny to think that these are coming after what's happened to Ant Man. You know, we don't we don't need actual numbers like box office numbers equivalent for TV shows to know these will fall apart. Like, it's who is going to watch the Avic? Especially Echo is the funnier one, I think, because both it's a side character from a side thing. Like. <sighs> Absolutely so, insane decision. So glad we're getting Echo before Doctor Doom yeah. and Fantastic Four and, and Silver Surfer, <laughs> Galactus, and Galactus and the X Men. <laughs> yes, freaking Echo, Echo's Ironheart, the girl we America need right Chavez, now. Miss Marvel, all got introduced before fucking Doctor Doom. <laughs> so <laughs> done. And the, oh, and there's that rumor out there that they're gonna sell Hulu to get Hulk and Namor back. First, I thought there wasn't a rights issues with uh, issue with Namor, but apparently there was. So, for one, if if Disney's going to sell Hulu, it's because they need to fucking money. It's like, and I think the 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 price tag it would cost them, or it'll be uh, twenty seven billion. You're not going to get that much back with a Hulk and a name Namor character at all. That that's that's the price tag that was out there. Is Hulu worth that? No, uh, Hulu is probably the one thing they should fucking hang on to. <laughs> it's oh, the okay. one thing that works. <laughs> it's the one uh, thing that works. It's the one thing that works. But they need the money. They need the money. So Pay uh, the bills. Yes. Yeah. Internet so I think if, if they sell their stake in it, it, it will be used to pay off their bills and not to get characters back. I think that's a, that's a very interesting. Uh, if I was Universal, would you sell? Would you sell the distribution rights to? the hulk for oh. like no no i just hang on to it and force disney to play ball like they did with sony by the way there's no spider-man deal yet has anybody heard anything about spider-man no i've that heard that they've um that sony have said they're gonna do a new trilogy with uh tom mm -hmm. but uh but no deal with marvel. From marvel pull away from marvel i would <laughs> Well, that's the thing. He's he's got way more star power and pull than fucking what? Who's even Captain before, Falcon? Before the situation was different. Like they, because yeah. they did such a bad job with that amazing Spider Man 2 movie that they were in a bad spot. Marvel was on all firing on all cylinders. Yep. Now it's a little bit different. They need Sony more than Sony needs them. Yep. Well, yeah, they can't sell Iron Man or Cap. So, and those are the two biggest hitters from the MCU. They're gone. Have been for a while. We've seen the damage that's done alongside all the uh, horrendously bad writing. So, uh, this is the thing, Gary. Right at the beginning, you said the death of Marvel, and I think some people might be mistaken in assuming like I thought it died already. And it's like there's like there's gonna be like 17 different deaths. It's gonna have there's a lot. You know, like the first time it, um, one of them uh, comes under budget. Do you think that's even possible that we'll get one that's literally under budget, like uh, versus under its? Do you know what I mean? Like the difference between oh, like a true flop. So yeah, like, so, yeah, so it comes in under what they state is their budget. Yeah. Uh yeah. I think I think Marvels will be it. Marvels could be the one, yeah. <laughs> yes. Because that's uh, that's all ready to go, isn't it? That film. They they are releasing that. It ain't gonna get back guild or anything. Sounds like they're reshooting the ending. <laughs> of yep. course they are. That's what, hopefully, that's what hopefully I was... so they all die. <laughs> do, you, do you think they've gone to the point where when they're shooting the original ending, they're all just like, why are we even bothering? <laughs> We're not gonna keep this <laughs> ending. Whatever happens, it's gone. So we may as well not do it. Wait until the reshoot. Uh God. Can't, and and can't uh, wait for that movie to come out. I oh, can't either. So much content. I was so <laughs> depressed when it was delayed. I was like, no, God, I want it in the middle of summer when there's nothing going on. Come on. Uh, but now it's going to be like we're really crowded at the end of the year again. Um, yeah, like, and and it looks pretty abysmal for movies this year outside of a couple. I think you know I'm looking forward to Dune and John Wick. Mm -hmm. 
What else? Oh, John Wick. I can't wait for that. Yeah. Dune and John, John Wick. I'll, I'm sure I'll think of something. There's, but you're right, uh, chat. This stuff, maybe. It's Death by a Thousand Paper Cuts. And see, the MCU is multiple franchises under one umbrella. And they're killing them off systematically. Like Thor, dead franchise now. Uh, yeah. Doctor Strange, I don't think ever picked up, to be honest with you. Is it his own franchise if he doesn't star in his own fucking movie? Yeah, the last one was America <laughs> Chavez in the Multiverse of Madness. Yes, it was. <sighs> well, and the third one is probably going to be a, they'll pass the torch, quote unquote, and she'll be the next Sorceress Supreme by the end of the film or something. I, I make a joke about it in the Doctor Strange 2 coverage, but more and more it feels like that's probably what they're thinking about because isn't Doctor Strange 3 already set to come out in the 2026? I remember seeing a, a post about that. Like they've already I got it. Don't know if the. I mean, it's the it's the only heavy hitter they have left that that can star in his own film. Yeah, right? I mean, it made enough money, right? To the point, <laughs> I was about to say to the point where I guess they gave Michael Waldron Avengers, but then again, uh, they don't have Spider Man to prop it up, though. No, and it, are they they're going to want Spider Man for the Avengers movies, right? Oh yeah, I think, I think one of the reasons why Doctor Strange did well in the cinema was the fact that they thought. Oh, we're going to get all these cameos from all these uh, heroes that we haven't seen yet, like like Spider Man, because it's the multiverse, and we we mm. or Secret Invasion or uh, Secret Wars, Secret Wars. Yeah, Secret Wars will probably have, I would imagine, anybody that they can get to sign on to come back. Oh shit, Lou Ferrigno will be in it. Like they'll yeah. they'll put every Marvel thing ever done in it because they they can for the most part now, uh, as long as it's just a guest appearance and stuff. It's but that's it. Like where do you go from there? You got to restart. You have to. And for one, it's not going to be the good Secret Wars Flash. It's going to be the shitty one. Yeah, it's going to be the Battle World one. Yeah, it's that's what it's going to be. The a whole event just to bring Miles Morales to the six one six. To, to get multiple books canceled, Miles Morales is Miles Morales, by the way. That's right. Sure, even the toys say it. The toys say it. Yeah, it's not. I don't make the rules. <laughs> Did you see that wonderful straw man tweet where somebody posted uh, a picture of the DC Justice League cartoon and then they had an arrow pointing down to Jon Stewart and they were like, Oh, if this was coming out today, they'd be all saying this is all woke. And then I saw in one of the comments, Nerd Roddick would be saying, Miles Morales, uh, Hal it's Jordan is Green Lantern. And I'm just like, you do realize that Spider-Man is a creation of Peter Parker. The Green Lantern Corps are army. essentially space police. Yeah. Yeah. And, and but the one number one, <laughs> all everybody here grew up with the fucking cartoon he was the star of it john stewart was the green lantern and that's probably i would say all of us love that show i love yeah. that show and, it, and show. it's part of a core it's the green lantern core oh. it, it has guy gardner who i love uh it has hal jordan uh who was i mean he was around that that was my green lantern but he was i, I like john Scott. i like john stewart better than him actually but that's that's Hal Jordan subjective. and Kyle Rayner were were, uh, were mine. Kyle Rayner's like uh, he's a great Green Lantern too, and uh, actually the Green Lantern for the majority of when I was reading comic books. So yeah, I had no problem with it at all. Uh, it's a Green Lantern core, but there is no Spider Man family. There is no Spider Man for the longest time. Spider Man was a loner. Wouldn't join the Fantastic Four. Wouldn't join the Avengers. Uh, and and they've just watered down Spider-Man. But the thing is, that's probably why the Green Lanterns never got above B-level status is because they're watered down. <laughs> they're watered yeah. down. You don't have one singular hero. Spider-Man is not only the biggest superhero in the world. He is Marvel's brand. He was their fucking brand. It said Marvel Comics around Spider-Man's head. So, you yeah, know. All the, just about every direct edition had him in the little, little UPC corner. Yep. He's their bread and butter. That's right. Now he's a paralyzed lesbian <laughs> transformer. Well, even even the main one <laughs> with hey, web uh, crutches. I sent you. I sent you this in DMs as about him uh, having Mary Jane. He thinks of her as a sister now. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I think God. of her as a sister now. 
Yeah. <laughs> and I still, I, still so dead. Dead. I think they're going to put him around that. I think they're going to put him. Mary Jane and Black Cat in a polyamorous relationship oh. with Black Cat as the <laughs> whatever you call the one that, that they don't have sex with her, but she has sex with them. I a polycule. So that's what it's called. If they're willing to shit all over their source material like that, is it surprise you at all that 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 the MCU is fucking dead? And I mean yeah. dead. There there uh you'll get a uh, a good response to Guardians of the Galaxy. Good response to Deadpool. Good response to probably the final Avengers film. If the, if Avengers Kang Dynasty is Black Falcon, Captain America, and uh, the A Force, I mean, I'm here for it. I, I want that to happen, but it is not going to be a billion thank dollars the Avengers fuck film. Out of Ryan Reynolds for convincing Hugh Jackman to join Deadpool because oh yeah, that's going to help significantly. He's single handedly going to save it. You know, they're gonna like they cannot. I know Disney's like stay on course, stay on target, no matter what. <laughs> stay on target. But like, Almost dude, there. you just Almost. introduced your <laughs> big villain. I know it impacted on the surface. <laughs> well, you know, you know who the leader of the Avengers is now. Is, it, is uh, this supposed to be Captain Marvel? Like Captain Falcon, Captain Marvel. Marvel. Game. They, uh, she's the leader of the Avengers in the books now. Uh, At least then, I don't know if it's the main one or a side book, but. The lineup in that book is practically MCU Avengers. I think which, for the um, MCU, they're fighting over whether or not it'd be do. Captain Marvel and Captain Falcon, right? Those are the two that might be the leader. David Gabriel told me they were going to do that at a retailer summit, that they were going to have the the comics mirror the movies. And at time, I like I didn't even take them seriously. I'm like, <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> so they're bringing wait 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 they on did. the side they're bringing in another falcon Is to take girl? over from anthony mackie's falcon so he can well say, so hey. yeah he's bringing in the new falcon in the new captain america film i mean that's where it's, it's captain, captain america, america order, right? four by the yeah. way without captain america in it which is it's gonna not, go down you know just like black Wakanda did you see the forever, trailer for like... ghosted no ghosted no um chris evans oh. Playing that, his natural self. Oh yeah, he was. Yeah, he's playing a damsel in distress, <laughs> a mansel in distress. While uh, what she called Re Rebecca De Armas or whatever, uh, and, Anna De Armas. Uh, yeah, and yeah, she, she's smoking she's hot. The, she's, too, she is. She's. The I, super, I would be tempted to see it. The just super she's spy hot. in it. I'm and tempted he, to see it because she's. So hot. it's true lies, <laughs> but just swapped. That's all. Is that what they're doing? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's 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 a new hero for a cuck generation. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's a True Lies TV show. Is that good chat? It's probably need to rewatch True Lies. I Gary, what? There's no, a show? No, there isn't. There, no, isn't. there isn't. Yes, no, there, there is a True no, Lies TV show. No, I did. You know, yeah. Uh, there was just one great film, and they never did anything I with the franchise again, which was wonderful. Oh, it's a crazy ass coked up. I'm sorry, completely sober. Tom Arnold did back in it. So. Well, what is he right. doing? I went to a convention uh, six or seven months ago, and Tom Arnold was there, and no one was going to talk. <laughs> He's on his phone the whole time. Yeah. No, th that's the, the reality. You go to these conventions, you see these stars that, like, have a decent following on Twitter, and you go in real life, and people wouldn't pay a fucking dollar to talk to them. Uh, a lot of them leave early. It's, yeah, it's it's... That's actually been going on at cons for a long time. Hmm. Uh, a lot of that is good publicists and uh, bots. Ugh. So Marvel's removal of the promo for its 2023 movie MCU suggests certain Disney Plus shows may be delayed. And we've already, again, got confirmation. Agatha Harkness, Ironheart, and uh, Echo. Echo, Echo. Because don't you guys want to see a show with a deaf protagonist, a one-legged death protagonist who kicked the shit out of Hawkeye. <laughs> no. And will beat the crap out of Daredevil in this series. No. Don't you want to see that? No. And, what? And, and completely and utterly <laughs> defeated Kingpin in his first appearance in his introduction into the MCU. Doesn't this, um, the MCU feel like it's followed that whole uh, bad times create great men, great men create good times, good times create... <laughs> Yeah, weak men. Like, doesn't that feel like what's happened? Like, Phase Three gave them all such a comfy position to create shit, and that shit has now finally 
uh, had all of its effects. We're at the turnover point now, you know, where Ant Man not making much money compared to what they wanted is seriously like <laughs> such a game changer. Oh, it's beautiful. And uh, I did find out from, I mean, you're going to have to trust me, bro, on this one, but uh, they're lying like hell on their budgets because they, uh, as Odin pointed out, they account for pickups and reshoots, which is just basic shit. But we're having. Every Marvel film is being not entirely reshot, but entire acts are being reshot. So that adds a th hundreds of millions of well, dollars. Well, as we know, uh, Gary, that, that, some of the it, acts it, aren't even written by the time they're filming them. The the estimate I was given is between, well, tens of millions of dollars, $50 million to $100 million. You got to add to every budget. And that's not the marketing part. That's them fucking around and reshooting and uh, just doing it by the seat of their pants. Because they don't give a shit. It's pretty obvious. Uh, they were they moved past the comic book fans a long time ago. Remember, look at this. Look at. Well, I think God. they thought that they were so big they could. They were too big to fail, and that's yes, quickly yeah, being definitely. proven wrong. Well, yeah, they, they thought that the Marvel brand, just that word Marvel in that red box, was enough. And Kevin Feige, not being a comic comic book fan, a real one, it's total fraud, by the way. Uh, would know if you were a comic book fan that Marvel is essentially fuck, three things, maybe, maybe four. It's Spider Man, Spider Man, and the X Men. <laughs> That's what fucking Marvel is. That's what's moved Marvel over the decades. Uh, even Captain America, you know, the Avengers was always kind of a popular book, but none of that shit sold as much as Spider Man and X Men did. X Men was the best selling book for like 40 years. It was, ridiculous. It was like. At first, like before they were Marvel, it was, you know, the Human Torch and Namor mm -hmm. and then Captain America and then Fantastic Four, Spider-Man came in and kind of just took it over for a long time. And then the X-Men came in and blew up. And that's just kind of where it stayed. I mean, everyone else just kind of became a side character, even Captain America and Namor. And I don't what happened to the original Human Torch? I don't even remember. Oh, uh, the original Human Torch the android died so he became part you're talking about like the invaders one right yeah yeah so the og human human torch died and they retconned his origin into Vig vision his android uh, body into vision okay and then vision was given uh wonder man's uh personality or wonder uh, man's that black dude yeah yeah he's not the black <laughs> dude. But, uh, I mean, it could have been retconned since uh, I quit. But, uh, yeah. He's the black guy. Wonder <laughs> Wonder, Wonder Man. The... And the centuries patterns. Asian. Thank you. Brain patterns. Brain patterns. I couldn't I couldn't use my brain patterns there. Thank you, chat. You are my backup brain patterns. I, I love you. Uh, he does come back. There's a there's a John Byrne story where he comes back. It's pretty cool. But uh, and I love the Invaders book when I was a kid. And, no, I never understood it when I was a kid. I'm like... How are they? Why are they different? Why does Human Torch have a sidekick named Toro? <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but uh, freaking loved it. And yeah, I didn't understand. I was so young. I didn't understand like the invaders took place like, you know, decades before Fantastic. I thought it was all the same time. Uh, there's still Nazis around, right? You know, I'm four. Okay. Don't ask much of me. There's Nazis Five. in this stream, dude. Ah. Oh, that's right. That's right. So here is your this is good God. If Guardians wasn't there, if Guardians wasn't there, well, I don't know. I got, I got, I got no hype for Guardians. None. If God, dude, if Guardians wasn't there, we would have believed this was a parody about five years. Yes. Back. Someone had sent the image. We'd be like, why would they? What? What is all of that? That's not even. You're just like, yeah, they're actually doing it. Because you're right. Guardians is the only thing, and even that, I feel like a lot of us recognize is is going to be a bygone part of. Marvel yeah. rather than uh, something to look forward to in, as a platform to go forward. Because I was going to say, you know, the whole like too big to fail. The only time that that would have been close to true was for like one year between Infinity War and Endgame. They, like, I've said it before, if they just packed out everything in that one year, that was where everyone, the hype was at maximum. Anything to give you any more information about how the story was. Because that's the thing. I think everyone here liked Infinity War, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. Much. yeah I loved Very it. Very much. Yeah. That was. Uh, I think that time. movie was this generation's Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, yeah, it's it's 
it's freaking great. It's in my top five for Marvel. Uh, it has a lot of really, really, you know, I like my hero moments. I like it when Thor comes back. It's fucking yeah. awesome, dude. It's fucking awesome. I love the just the the Doctor Strange one on one with Thanos and the Iron Man one on yep. one. It's really good. Just superhero. Or when Thor stuff. meets the Guardians for the first time. See, that's what Marvel's supposed to be, and that was that was cool. That was all cool. Then it goes to shit. Yeah. Then it goes to shit. Fast. Then they made like I was I was I'm from one of my videos. I had to go through. I've been going through some things for. And um, I was going back to Loki, and I just I got reminded, uh, Mahler, that that is the Loki from Avengers. Yep. That is the fucking Loki. That is not the Loki from anything else other than Avengers. Which is like and peak Loki, by the way. He's peak Loki. And he turns into such a pussy in like 30 seconds. It's like, what? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and if you don't understand, it's because they watched the video of his life, and he saw that he Dies. Well, isn't that great though? You make fun of the memory store. It's the same writer. It's the same fucking yeah. writer. It's the same lady. Waldron, right? How do I yeah? How do I develop okay. my character? I have them watch their life and they develop the same way. It's like that's not how humans is work. Waldron, at all. <laughs> is Waldron is Waldron gonna be on both Avengers films? Um either the first or the second, I can't remember. Because I know Loveness is on one of them too. Yeah, those two are in charge. And of they're both Avengers. from like Rick and one. Well, no, is that one of them? Yeah, from no, Rick yeah, you're Morty? right. Uh, both are from Rick and Morty. Both or at least... are from fucking Rick and Morty. And then <laughs> Jessica Gao is from Rick and Morty. Yep. Jessica Gao's writing it? No, but she's from Rick and Morty. Okay. So I was just noticing uh, the Quantum Mania guy is Jay from he's Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty. Mm -hmm. And then like James and Gunn leaves and they replace Don't forget him though, Gary, his other longest credit is writing for the fucking Jimmy Kimmel show. I know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and the Oscars. The fucking Oscars. Oh. <laughs> this is who we need to write superhero movies. The guy who wrote Jimmy Kimmel tonight. Oh. Yes. I, I can't imagine why this is failing, guys. I just I don't understand. <laughs> this shocks me. He never I wrote a movie before, not in his life. <laughs> I just don't understand this. It's it's insane to me. Oh like, my what? god! And he sounded like he just wanted to straight up mount Jonathan Majors on the red carpet for Quantum Mania too. <laughs> probably did. Judging by the outfits he he wears, he'd probably be into it. I think so. Why is why is Adam Sessler back in the news? Former G host. Yeah, oh, because he got somebody yelled at him for making fun of JRPG. I'm not apologizing to MAGA weirdos, dude. You don't need to. You need to go to rehab. That's what you need. That would be my guess. It's just a guess. Damn it. Bounding is doing it too with their freaking ads. You're killing me. Oh, John F. Trent. You're killing me. Let's read a couple soups. Uh, but, uh, as yes, how's that Ant-Man box office been doing? Did huh. it get under a million per day? <laughs> That's what I'm waiting um, for. We're going to, I don't think it's going to be up. Monday's not going to be up and maybe for another couple of hours, but, uh, the weekend did 12.4 million the weekend. Oh. What was the past weekend? Like the previous past, the, the weekend before that was 36. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Uh, and then the weekend before, obviously, was like 105. Uh, yeah, the film has died a death. I'm just going to bring it up. But it's it's like even you got to dig even to find on the numbers. Um, it yeah, was 106, no one... 106 first week, 31, well, 32 second week and uh, second weekend, I should say. Yeah. And then third weekend, 12.8. And if you notice, there's no outlets really talking about how this movie failed. None at all. They'll give it a bad review, but when it comes to talking about how bad this is, they don't say anything. No, you did a good, well, all your videos are good, but you did a good video today, and I like how you pointed that out. Uh, and, and it's just happening more and more, and it's waking more people up. That's why, you know, we, we are the, like it or not, we're the alternative entertainment media now. As just fans going, you know, they're lying to you. You know, they're full of shit. They're trying to, as you pointed out in your video, rightly so, uh, Yellow Flash, is they're just protecting the corporations. They're protecting the shareholders. And yep. how do we know how many, I know some, like comicbook.com belongs to CBS and Paramount. They they own it. 
Mm -hmm. So they do a lot of very positive Star Trek, particularly in Star Trek Discovery, which we'll get to. But uh, that's that's how I got into this. I started going, oh, these fuckers are lying. They're lying, you know, and nobody's calling them out on it. So now we're just obviously getting lied to. Like, I, I, I you know, Ant-Man shot up to 100 million, which was way below our, you know, our weekend estimates that we had to, you know, uh, estimate down. But it shot up there. And I went back and they did, they, Flash, they did the same fucking thing with the Eternals. Remember the Eternals? was supposed to open up to like $120 million and it opened up to 70. Yeah. And, and then they go, Eternal shoots to $70 <laughs> in the past. <laughs> $70. $70. <laughs> $70 million. Oh, $70, yeah. Sold seven tickets, maybe. All seven yeah. tickets. Uh, yeah. Like, and then what was funny is they were all pandemic, pandemic. And then Spider-Man came out a couple weeks later and just fucking destroyed it. Shattered it. Shattered it. And uh, their whole narrative was gone. But you're right. Uh, Yellow Flash, they just keep lying and they won't say a word. And honestly, at this point, what are they protecting, Yellow Flash? I mean, it's not like they're going to get money from Disney. There's no money to to get. Uh, is it to protect? I think it's partially advertisers. I think they're just beholden to advertisers that really... And also, I think there's just a bunch of fucking shills who don't know what the hell they're talking about. Uh, I also you mean the think, Wikipedia generation. Yes, yes. That Eric I read Wikipedia. Yeah, of, I know everything about the Eternals now. Okay. A lot of Ninja Turtles experts yesterday. Oh, they yeah, found yeah. the wiki page. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. I guess Look, we could talk about. Yeah, that. Flash, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to come at you on this one because <laughs> there's no no white woman in history has ever had curly brown hair. <laughs> I was well. Never. She changed over time, like a lot. But I was always confused on her when I first saw her. But that didn't last very long. They changed her like by six or seven issues, and it was clear what she looked like because she had straighter hair, and uh, you know she didn't. She was clearly white at that point. And but the, the crazy- first couple of issues, she does kind of look like his ex-wife, but they never said she's black. So I don't, I, I don't know where this like big controversy comes from. Why not just make her just show she white? That's why not just make her mixed race and hot instead of? fat <laughs> and ugly <laughs> and ugly and old. Well, she looked ugly in the what first did jane, what was jane's jane theory's video title was so funny they made april fat white ugly old and gay <laughs> it's like what <laughs> damn like she got it damn all in there jane. <laughs> jane. Yes, jane. Really out in the chat she was never fat and ugly yeah no she, she's never there was never a question if she looked like a potato or not that was never. I mean, dude, this the movie's going to be a fart in the wind because oh, it's going to be awful. God, that's Rogan. A great tweet. You want to ruin a franchise? Just get some baked Gen X or addicted to weed. Uh, then it says Kevin Smith, and it says number two, repeat number one, and it has Seth Rogan in the picture. It's a good tweet. Now ah, there hey. is a bright side to this. There's a bright side. If you've Content? ever wanted to own a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one, which you know three thousand were made. When he crashes this franchise so hard, you actually might be able to afford it now. I, you know, I have a couple. You I don't have their first print or second. I know I had one first print. I do. Have I've got. I I've got know. two fourth prints signed by Kevin Eastman. Uh, the awesome. the third print I think has a large number, but the second print is only six thousand issues. The first print's three thousand. And how many of those are lost to attrition? Uh, I, my estimate, as I told you yesterday is probably a third, uh, a third of the first prints of the first prints. So maybe 2000 in existence. And I think that probably is a high estimate. Uh, Jay can't root for $20 says, do you think Marvel is a little concerned about how popular the guardians three movie will be with James Gunn leaving for the competition? Yes. You yeah. could already you could hear that in Kevin Feige's voice when he was directly asked about James Gunn, and he's like, "Well, he still has to work for us for seven more months." It sounded yeah, very lose, lose out of them. character for Kevin Feige, but you're right. Uh, will they sabotage themselves slightly to stop fans from following Gunn to DC? I don't know. No, they need the money. But guys, Marvel has sabotaged itself in the past in the comic books. Now they, this shocks me. <laughs> yeah, they did it with X Men. X Men. Yep. Fantastic Four, they canceled and Fantastic, Fantastic yep, Four. They did. And, and All because of Fox. They were petty yep. bitches. Yeah. Wait, what's the history on that? Oh. Oh. <laughs> 
Fox X-Men was uh, kind of turning things around and they had the rights to X-Men and the FF and they weren't even willing to talk to Disney. And uh, when Perlmutter, I think, was still there, but Marvel made the decision to de-emphasize the Fantastic Four and their number one selling comic book for decades, X-Men, to prop up the Inhumans. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that went. Remember when Inhumans was going to be a movie? It was going to be one of the Marvel movies. Yeah, <laughs> and then ended up being a shitty storyline on hey, Agents of Steel. Remember when we got like a proper looking Black Bolt and a proper looking Reed Richards, and then and they then blew their murdered heads off? them. It yes. made them look stupid. A Black Bolt could kill you with his mouth. Oh. <laughs> Oh, okay. I could kill you with this gun I have hidden behind my back <laughs> that I shouldn't tell you about. So fucking stupid. Well, even to be fair, Reed Richards is known as kind of a dumb guy that gives away. He's an idiot. Of, you know, he's a yeah. complete. He's yeah. Uh, he's not as smart as Shuri. Okay. <clears throat> Dumbest or, person in the Marvel universe. Or mm -hmm. Riri. Yeah. Shuri or Riri. Shuriri. Oh my God! People are gonna totally ship them. I'm surprised that hasn't already. Hasn't happened already. Oh, just as long as every hero is gay, I don't mind. Well. uh... New, more news on that because we'll, we'll get to that. Shazam! Oh, sh hey. Got a one. hey, thank God. Thank I was God. worried for a second. No. Finally, we've got inclusivity in in a flop. Uh, <laughs> that's good. By the way, I think everyone should know there is about one, I would say 36.5 hours of allotted time to talk about Shazam before it exits the human zeitgeist from it when it, when it launches. <laughs> Science has come up with an estimate of around. I think that's a good estimate. I figure by the time I get out of my car and get to my house <laughs> after the movie, I'll go, what did I just do? I, did I get abducted? I feel like I lost time. <laughs> And then you'll be like, all right, reviewing Shazam. And then everyone will be like, the first one? You go, no, 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 the second one came out. And they're like, wasn't that years ago? Was that years ago? And then I'll probably just review 1823. Or no, not 1823. 1923. I don't know my years anymore. <laughs> Where's the incentive to see Shazam anymore? Because of the fact that they're out, like, openly none. saying none of this matters. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely none whatsoever. <laughs> Why should I go see this then? Well, um, I, that's uh, uh, Ms. Marvel's legs. Okay, yeah, I, I mean, those are some nice thighs. I, I, I'm not going to lie to you. Kind of young, though. So, oh, she's like um, 26, isn't it? Uh, 26. That's pretty young. The actress. Um, well, I, I, and we talked about it last Real BBC, but that, that tweet from uh, David F. Sandberg where he's like, go see it. Go see the movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please go, go see it. Well, I mean, that's that that's that game we were talking about. Like the Access Media writes an article to to further a narrative that we all know is complete shit, but the people on the other side of us, you know, the other side of truth and authenticity want to run with it because they're the company said so. Disney said so. So that makes it fact and you're a bigot. I mean, that's pretty much this game we're playing. So James Gunn comes out. Does this big, oh, I'm announcing my DC, but we still got four movies that are, you know, lame ducks that we're totally excited about that you have to go see. And they're, I mean, outside of Flash, they're all going to flop. I, I don't know if Fla Flash is going to make any money because it, it well, is rumored to be one of the most expensive movies ever made. Yeah. It, imagine he was honest. He said, listen, all of these are getting cut off and reset. Nobody really cares. These products are just getting pushed out. That would be, I, I think it can. would be, get a better response because it would be honest. Because everybody, everybody knows that these are obligatory films that will be meaningless. None of these fucking people are coming back in their in their roles. It's done. James Gunn's going to reset everything. And I think, you know, getting and if he doesn't. Then he's screwed because he got rid of Henry Cavill for next. What people will perceive is nothing. And well, reality worry, for Hollywood is perception. He may not be keeping Henry Cavill, but Harcourt shall return the. That that nobody seems excited by me mentioning it. What the fuck? No, I'm not. I'm just watching the Enterprise fight a mummy. <laughs> More entertaining. It is. It is. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I think the the ability to like we talked before, but there's some movies that come out for DC that I think do slightly better than they would have with Marvel going at the same time because some audiences are just like superhero movie, woohoo! But the hype, the culture, the the event worthiness of, of superhero movies is declining and it's going to do it fast. And that's going to hit DC possibly just as much as Marvel. Well, 
All you have to do is look at James Gunn's announcements, videos about the announcements, traction on Twitter. It's not there. It's just not there. Nobody He cares. had to come out. Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Flash. He had to come out with the mm. big, the big hitters. And he just came out with crap. Like yeah. a lot of it is just crap. Well, Waller. Booster Gold. <laughs> the authority it's just like what are you doing i like booster gold but why is he coming out now like yeah, he should come out that's, after that's it, yeah. like him, but nobody knows <laughs> he who should he come is. out in the next phase no normie knows who booster gold is flash we know who booster gold is because we collect comics and we've been into comics i think i think you put chris pratt in that role that would be a good movie but uh, yeah, they're going to put Jonathan, be, Jonathan Majors will be uh, Ma Booster Gold. Gonna be Batman for fun. <laughs> and Batman. They, they, they could all be good <laughs> movies. Superman. But like, man, just, just kneecap. Jonathan Majors is the new Idris Elba, dude. <laughs> 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 he is. Oh my God, he's so amazing. Oh, wait. I just love Jonathan Majors. Chris Nicholson for $20. Last week, I was at a bar after a Comic-Con, and Chris Chibnall walks in. <laughs> is that a joke? Uh, my friend is a fan, but too shy to say hi. I ask him to say quick hello to my friend, and he ends up talking with him for an hour. How I feel conflicted. Uh, I wouldn't talk to uh, Yeah, I'm not. I, I, what would you say? Thanks for killing Doctor Who. Good job. Well done. Killed yeah, a, you're not gonna get any franchise? fun answers. As, like you could be like, "Why?" with the timeless children, but there's not gonna be an answer you're gonna like. I think he did answer that. Uh, uh, he did answer to, that. Yeah, yeah. They're trying to say that they use. Uh, they had always planned the wreck on it, which is just that's already been debunked. That's so much bullshit. It's well, I saw. He said. Um, uh, he said what we said. He said exactly what we said. He said that. Uh, the history of Doctor Who was just white men, and um, we wanted to wreck on that. We wanted to change that. Somebody in the chat said Nathan Fillion is Booster That gold. would be a good one. Too old. Too old, yes. but he would have been good. He would have been good. He would have been perfect Hal Jordan with Nathan Fillion. Live action Hal Jordan. He would have been perfect 10 years ago. Gary, years. did you ever read that run where it takes place in between Star Trek three and four and Captain Kirk is the captain of the Excelsior? Uh, I have that run now. I did not read it, but I bought it. So I, I want to read. read that. Tell me yeah. if it's any good. I will. I will. Apparently it ties everything up. Spock loses his memory again or something. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I got it. It's like, uh, there's, there's a few runs. I, I, I just, the, the property runs I wasn't that into when I was younger. I'm like, wow, they're cheap. I got it for cheap too. So that, that's like another thing that could be Sulu too then. Yep. Uh, <laughs> well, think about the actor Sulu, the day rate actor is as William Shatner likes to describe him <laughs> demanded to be a captain of a ship for him to come back. What a, <laughs> they're like, you do realize you're not really a captain of a starship, right? <laughs> I have to be a captain. William Shatner's response to him doing that was so great. He's like, you realize like the cameras are over here. Uh-huh. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, uh, yes. Look at, look He's right. What He's spot. barely in that movie. Yep. So they, they barely put him in the movie uh, because he was such a pain in the ass and probably because he was such a weirdo grabbing 13-year-old boys. Which he admitted doing, by the way. But he was like, oh, it's just the time. Oh, really? Was it? Hanging around Polanski or something like that? Shit. I was more, I was saying, I was more yeah. happy to see Yeoman run than I was soon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Jerkoff Juggernaut has gifted five Nerdrotic memberships for $25. Thank you very much. Uh, Tutorial Slave has a ooh, seven parts. Good God. Which where does one start? Okay. At the top. At the top. Thank you. Uh for $35. Thank you. They could have easily turned Kang into another 
thinking man's antagonist by making him a scientist who accidentally split himself into all variants has therefore lost his sense of individuality and is in pursuit of the true origin. Uh, that's why he, uh, he'd play fast and loose with the multiverse cohesion and stability. Most of the movies would turn into experiments. For instance, uh, he's the one whispering into Wen Wu's ear to bring down the barrier. Uh, yeah, but that, again, we're into this no free will thing, which I think is just fucking stupid. And then, and then uh, are they going to do a song goes, it was Kang all along. Uh, yeah i just wouldn't have done multiverse uh, yeah between that away. other realm and our reality therefore exploiting love he uh guides gore on the multiverse killing spree necessity that awesome team up of old thor rune thor lady thor beta ray bill and arthur you mean from the actual comic book that would have been fun but they but they you know Taika Waititi said he was going to ruin your mythos in a minute, baby. And he meant it. Uh, he blows up another Earth in Eternals, and he allows Tiamat to emerge. He either masquerades as Nightmare or even features on the Illuminati in Mom. He plays Dress Up in No Way Home, rounding out the Sinister Six roster. Victor Timely pops up in flashbacks, tailoring this reality to his liking. A clear link uh, between Iron Lad and Kang uh, is established already. He's barely ever loose especially not uh to wham and loki or highly evolved ants and lead us to more uh satisfying conclusion lead, lead us to a more satisfying conclusion than the cgi extravaganza we're all expecting and preemptively tired of they could eliminate his threat uh with professor x and uh, mr fantastic wanda strange black panther and iron man variant which would be an awesome illuminati i think uh, engaging in some sort of therapy session with Kang to help him track down his origin and either shut off the variants or have them fade out of existence and he'd finally be at peace. It's I better think than what they're doing. <laughs> it's better what they're doing. It is. That is way better than what they're doing. And what they're going to do is they're probably going to retcon as much as they can with uh, in, in Kang Dynasty. And Ravana Renslayer is his girl, so she's going to factor into this and she'll be the key to everything, I'm sure. I don't even want Beta Ray Bill in the MCU. Nope. I don't even want these characters to show up. No. Hey, good news. Adam Warlock's coming. Hey, remember when Great. we got ta remember when we got Taskmaster? Oh, oh we didn't get Taskmaster. <laughs> <laughs> remember when we got Modoc? Taskmaster was the Taskmaster. worst until Modoc. And everyone when we started saying, oh, it's a fucking At least movie. they looked uh, like was kind of Modoc. Taskmaster was not Taskmaster. That was, was a man. I wasn't even was a man. It was a man, it was a man was a for ninety nine percent of it. Yeah. <laughs> this is true. You had the body, the stunt double, body double, or whatever. Walking around Task like he had a nine inch sausage in between his leg, and then they pull. It'll it out. be a man again. <laughs> It'll be a man again because isn't he going to be in th or she? Isn't she going to be in Thunderbolts? Yes. Yep. Uh, and Gary, can I just pick you up? How dare you insult the female penis? Oh, uh, I'm so, I'm so, so sorry. Not really. Not really. Look at these. Say beautiful. sorry to Papa Susan. Um, Papa Susan, who's not even a CEO. Uh, her replacement is not a CEO. He's a president. So I think they're just back. To, I think they're just like, forget the charade. Uh, Google still runs YouTube, which it always has. You think Susan Wojcicki, who like rented her garage out, that was her experience. You think she was actually running this company? Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Oh, she always annoyed me because she sounds like a valley girl. She you heard her talk. Yeah. She is. Oh my God. Like, YouTube is like a mess. Okay. <laughs> Isn't it, Oz? Uh, I can Ellis for $25 thought I'd try my hand, uh, my hand. Sorry for moving in on someone else's territory framed by the tit tangler for touching when he only wanted to look. Can Tom clear his name under the new guise of the Kiwi? Oh, maybe. <laughs> the tit tangler. <laughs> Remember the key to peeping Tom is he's always just trying to look at boobs and he accidentally uh, uh, saves people's lives. Stumbles across crime and stumbles saves across crime. Yeah, the second you specifically have him go out there and save someone's life for that purpose, you've assassinated Tom, and we yeah. we, we can't have that. No. Yeah. 
Tom doesn't need to believe just, he's doing he good. Just want to see some bumps. Just an accidental hero. Yeah. Don't look at this one. Now. That's why Psychic's X Ray go. Oh my god, these comics are so rad. <laughs> Come on, X Ray Girl, let's solve some crime. <laughs> His big hero choice will be to be able to see like five pretty good bobs versus one amazing bob, and and he's not going to know what to do. It's better. To no, he gets frozen variety. up when he when he sees that perfect set of boobs. It's kind of like his kryptonite. He kryptonite, just, yeah. yeah, yeah. He can't stop looking. He won't be able to move. He's just stuck there. Quick, a train's coming, Tom. I can't. Bob's so good. And then, of course, girl just picks up the girl and brings her towards the train. Come on, yeah, Tom, yeah. let's go. Numero uno. Numero uno. There you go. When you get nice. to the cosmic side of the Peeping Tom universe, of course, you'll encounter red bo boobs, green boobs, all kinds, and they'll Ooh. have different effects on him. Colors of the boobs. Sometimes making him more powerful, sometimes weaker. You know, you, you never know. Mm. You have to write it all out. Infinity boobs. Peeping Tom <laughs> and the infinity boobs. Mm-hmm. Does uh, who tweet? Everybody except for me tweeted about that fucking Arpel O'Neill stuff. Arpel O'Neill. Arpel. Arpel. Arpel O'Neill. Will never not be funny. I just love how everyone. I'm such a diehard fan. Like all these people, they go to the wiki page, and they think that they know everything about the. Half these people had no idea that that franchise started in a comic. You know. In fact, I would say like 75% of people have no idea that book started as a comic. I thought they based the comics after the Michael Bay film. That's where it all started. Hey yeah, that was it. <laughs> That's oh. what I read on Wikipedia. Oh, God, there's that Star Wars poster, too. With oh, it's front and center. It is terrible. Oh, my God. And then they have like dead-eyed fucking <laughs> Luke. <laughs> Yeah, they're all dead eyed. Yeah. You can even see Pedro's dead eyes behind his mask. Or the stuntman's dead eyes, I should say. But... Yeah. As yeah, did you watch Mando? Mando? Just like, you know, Yellow Flash could make a better thumbnail than that fucking Star Wars poster. We'll look at that in a minute. Sorry, Gina. I didn't mean that. Oh, no. I've oh, not seen God. this. You haven't seen this? No, yeah, that's that's no, that's, no, that's no, Arpel no. O'Neill. That's no. Arpel O'Neill. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you worship the black woman. A April never turned down a meal. Even the the <laughs> turtles look weak sauce. Like they don't look like they can well. It, yeah, I, uh, people were praising it. Uh, it looks like a after school fucking special that I'm not going to care about. So this is coming to this is going to cinemas. This is going into movie theaters. <laughs> this is you are you are kidding me. <laughs> You're kidding me, man. She's the same shape as your icon, Gary. Uh, she is. <laughs> <laughs> she is. She's very oh, round. No. She's very, very oh, round. No. <laughs> oh my god, she is the icon. Look. <laughs> so Seth Rogen. <laughs> Seth Rogen, you know, produced the boys and preacher and that kind of brought him back into prominence right so now he's he's kind of been anointed the nerd Wait, guy so he produced something that had excellent source material mm -hmm. just, yep. just ask the same. never forget santa inc oh yeah. i won't i, I can't because i watched the whole thing for a video i haven't watched any of it but i know didn't watch a single uh, yeah I no. know. did, and, did rotten trailer. tomatoes ever get any reviews on there for that show that is a good question that is a good question that we can look up uh i don't know i the, remember nobody would review it they were all scared to they were all well yeah I, because it's a it was like one of the most hateful things ever created it's like prior to Velma, prior yeah. to Vel like it is just anti white, anti Christian, anti Christmas, like just it's every resentment these privileged anti -fun. fucks in Hollywood who have gone way too far on minimal talent, uh, like Seth Rogen. Like, tell me what the uh, okay, he produced the boys and Preacher. Well, Preacher went to shit, like after the, the first season, it went to absolute shit, like literally at the end, if you watch the end of that first season. Um, and the boys went to shit after the first season too. 
Sorry, not a fan. Not a fan of that at all. Agreed. Uh, went way off the source material, and now it's just a own the Trump hate, own the Trumpers show. That's all it is. It went after memes, Gary. It went after the. It memes. went after those evil memes. Because memes are yeah, <laughs> yeah, thieves. Yep. They're remember, the only people that meme. Remember when they did that in the boys, and then they did it in the Batman, <laughs> and then they did it in She Hulk. Oh. <laughs> It's like, we've got the perfect villain. It is Hollywood talking to each other. We've got the perfect villain. Our paying customers. Our customers, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you Batman do a billion? Uh, I, maybe that god-awful third act. And let's be real. It's average at best. It's got great soundtrack, though. Really I think the soundtrack. first two hours, it's got some good stuff. It's fine. Yeah. It's got some good stuff. That last 45 minutes, 50 minutes Ugh. is a, is a fucking disaster. Absolute disaster. But so that, I like to say it's a great 2-hour movie that's unfortunately 2 hours 45 minutes long. And 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 now we said it would get worse before it gets better. This is pretty bad. <laughs> Wait, Debate, we, we just had Velma, man. Like you don't need to, any more evidence really. Oh. Well, people have already compared her to Velma. They put them right next to each other, and it's like we are looking oh, for no. new voices, <laughs> different I characters. This won't, uh, and they all be... look the same. <laughs> I don't think this will be as Vel painful as Velma, but yeah, I'm just saying Velma was really, really bad. Where? Who is the dentist that gave Michelangelo braces? It was the turtle dentist. Yeah, the yellow flash. And Donatello prescription eyeglass glasses. I'm just saying. I think they gave Donatello a case of the Transformers. Well, which one is gay? Purple. Okay. Yeah, have you heard them? It sounds like it's a, it's a girl voicing them. Oh, God. I hope they they introduce their pronouns in the show or in the movie. Oh, God. I'll, they... I'll be walking out the cinema, which I'm not going to. I'm not going to see this. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a fart in the wind. This is... If they don't. The most people will talk about it is how ug ugly April looks, and then they won't watch it. And they'll just go watch the 1990 movie, which is brilliant. I don't, you know, why does she have to be fat? I just don't get it. Yeah. It's, it's so, I wouldn't even care, honestly, if she was black. Like, can't she just be fit? Why does everyone got to be fat and gross? Because just... you're not allowed to objectify women. Women are not there to be easy on the eye for you. Well, and like if they have to run from something, I'm sorry. Like she's gonna be <laughs> the only thing the that, that that April's run to is a dog. <laughs> her, <laughs> <can't run. laughs> her arch nemesis is that staircase right next to her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so's my stairs, by the way. <laughs> I'll get you one day, stairs. But yeah, I think yeah. her arch enemy enemy is diabetes, mate. Like you can already tell she walked on it. Look. Oh no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and that but that's it. What did, did they offer a pizza? And she's like, no. Or something like you've never said She no handed it to him. That's all that's left. That's that all that's like she ate half of it. Yeah. I, I, I had my dinner. The rest is yours, guys. <laughs> yeah. Not one slice left. It's just for you. Oh. Thanks. <laughs> I was all over Twitter yesterday, though. All over it. Oh, and they turned the comments off on the trailer, didn't they? Real quick. Did they already? That wow. was Peter Pan. Oh, Peter Pan? I thought they did. Oh, let me check. Teenage. Oh, no, I can't use that joke. So, so we still have Peter Pan, Little mm -hmm. Mermaid, and Snow White. <laughs> They're gonna be Is Snow White sad. coming out this year? I don't know. I don't know if it's coming out this year, but. Damn, those oh are yeah, be... okay. Nickelodeon UK comments turned off. Ooh. Three point three point two k likes, nine point two k dislikes. So, Nickelodeon UK's turned it off. What about Paramount Studios? Uh, I'll have a look. Paramount Pictures. These guys. Uh, comments are up. Seventy k up votes. Thirty seven k down votes. It's gonna get ratioed for sure. Yep. Wow, I am so shocked. I am. Ooh, 
I just I don't shocked. I just don't get Seth Rogen. I don't get bringing him like what about his background scream put him on Ninja Turtles? He says what they want him to say. Yeah. It's a shame that that there was a CGI one that came out not that long ago. That one yeah. was actually pretty good. I remember it. It was good. It's a shame that that didn't do well. Like we could have got more of that. I just think the turtles has the ceiling and it would be probably better suited trying to go live action with it again. But now I just want the first movie was so good. I love that first movie so much. Apparently coming to 4k soon. Nice. <gasps> I've not watched I'm it. Getting so that one. Yeah. I just nice. want the first one. I don't think the second one or the third one are that rewatchable. The first one though is really good ant-man was so popular he was in marvel feature and never stayed in it very long back in the but day this is this is another redhead by the way that's been sacrificed uh yeah what what does hollywood have against white women with red hair hmm. well redheads do have a bit of a reputation as who turned Harvey Weinstein down? Uh, yeah. Good question. Good. Definitely not Jennifer Lawrence, that's for sure. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she wanted to be the first redhead. Yeah. <laughs> she just wanted to be the first redhead. Uh, she'll always have. She'll always have Harvey. Just has to look in that child's eyes. Visit him in prison, I guess. Cole Hauser for 20 Canadian pesos says, Hey, Real BBC, thanks for keeping me entertained. Thanks, as Gary, Flash, Baller, and fellow Canadian ex Good. Wait, wait, wait. Hit it. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You know where I got that from? What is it? What's that from, chat? It's from a movie. God, I know what it is, and I can't. You know what it is. I know what it is, and it's not. I don't know what it is. I'll Someone's going to say I'm it. for chat. Uh, Austin Powers? Nope. Hustle and Flow? Nope. Oh, no. Bill, Kill Bill? Oh, Kung Fu Hustle. It's not Sun Ting Wong. <laughs> Kung Fu Hustle. Low. It's not Big Trouble. It's not Kung Fu Hustle. No. Uh, Karate Kid? What's happening? Hot stuff. Come on. Oh, you probably haven't seen it, you little normie. Pro 60 definitely. candles. Thank you. Oh, Red yeah, Dot I definitely Productions. haven't seen it. 16 Oops. candles. <laughs> Long Duck Dong. Long Duck Dong? What? Long Duck Dong. Oh. Long Duck Dong. <laughs> Who's got Long What? That's not as. Wow. Two You're studying what? seconds. You said that with, with real certainty there, X Ray Girl. <laughs> You know, <laughs> that's right between you and me. Oh, your, your duck time is pretty short. I watched Outland with Sean Connery. Freaking great movie. Loved every moment of it. Uh, great movie. Rise of the Beasts will suck. Peace. I do not doubt oh. that. Well, the Transformers have their pronouns. As. Oh I'm, my God. Well, I, did you see yeah. the? Did you see the clip? Oh, I was gonna make a video on that. I totally forgot to do it. Too. Let's get the clip. We'll get the clip. We'll I'll get the it. clip. Um, oh, I couldn't believe this. I couldn't fucking. Here we go. I've got it. I've got it. This is a damn good book right here, by the way. This is on a Nick. This is on a Nickelodeon. I think Nickelodeon is it. This is on a kids' TV uh, show. This is the uh, the current Transformers. More trans than formers. Okay. I know I'm safe when I'm with my friends or other non-binary people. Non-binary? People who aren't female or male. Oh, God. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have assumed. I always knew my pronouns felt right, but... What a wonderful word for a wonderful experience. Hey, it's okay. Wow. Do you know? We'll convert your children. <laughs> exactly. Do you know people outside of West Hollywood, San Francisco, and New York 
never discuss this shit like fucking ever. This is so exclusively uh, suburban, uh, progressive white women. Flash, I know I'm speaking your language, but this is this is who's what? fucking pushing women. this shit. What? Women. White people. White women sure are concerned about everybody's racisms and yeah. busy bodies. Yeah. God, dude, I could tell you stories. BBC you. has apologized to J.K. Rowling. And they also greenlit a new season of her show, Strike. Mm. They did. They did. I watched that video today too. Um, I love it. Uh, yeah, because uh, like she's. She's proving that it's, I mean, we've all known it's bullshit, but she's proving it's bullshit for one, because she's richer than most people and can get away with it. She can, anybody who calls her a, a Nazi on, uh, on Twitter, she can sue them and will for fun. So you see a lot of people bending the knee and she makes companies a fuck ton of money, a fuck ton. And, and do you, do you think these protests for JK Rowling, Again, I've been to Orlando. I saw the Wizarding World. It was effing packed. Oh yeah, packed. There's no impact at all on this woman. It, it's it's just Twitter. That's all it is. It is just Twitter, uh, and it's maybe hundreds, maybe thousands of people in the entire effing world who give a crap about this. Amplified by, uh, well, I mean, it's political. It's absolutely political. Uh, which is really strange because it's just the one single thing she disagrees with the progressive left on like one. It's, it's crazy, but it's useless. It is 100% compliance, Gary, or it is cancellation. But don't ask the people who are doing the counseling what they're up to. And to state the obvious, what, it, what the harm it does is to, transgender people because they're legitimate starting, transgender legitimate people. transgender people because you have others it's getting annoying and and that's what what, what normal people what that's the the general public are going to associate with it is you're fucking annoying me right now like and i didn't care before to be honest yeah, with you and every go on flash sorry. Well, just, that's i i think that hogwarts game would have sold it would have sold good regardless, but the activists definitely helped tack on a couple million units to that oh, yeah. game because people are tired of these fucking crybabies. And they're, they are, they, they say they're trying to help transgender people. They're their worst enemies. Yep. They're worst enemies. They're making things worse for them. Mm -hmm. It's like cancer trying to say that they're helping the host. Because it's a, it's a big difference, like, how you deal with somebody individually in your life, and then, then there's a group of people mandating how you need to talk, live your life, where your son or daughter, who your son or daughter will go into the bathroom with. Like, no. Like, fuck no. If a company can afford that, like, they have the family bathroom now, which is single. If you can afford that, fine. Do that. I don't care. I, 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 I don't give a shit. It makes sense. But uh, forcing yourself into sports, uh, you know. Uh, the only Did you see the the weightlifting competition? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, for weightlifting now they have to let trans people in. Oh, come on! I'm thinking about becoming a weightlifter now. Be, yeah, like do, pull a zuby. <laughs> yeah, yellow yeah. flash. You can become the the world champ really he quick. He holds the record for Britain, British UK women to zuby. He does. He does. <laughs> Hail zuby. The one that sport is. I'm waiting for that for that rule to change on though is definitely WNBA. I think it actually could boost sales. Well, that's the joke I heard on Twitter yesterday. It's like, I think it was Dick Masterson who said it got people to care about female sports. <laughs> it's like all the men going in there got people to care about it. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Uh, oh, wait. I don't want to hit that one. And the private chat, Gary. What did I do wrong now? Uh, nice. Oh. Cool. Well, you announce it. But it's gonna be on your channel, so you announce it. But you pulled it off. You announce it. Okay. My fine. ego's fine, Mike. X-ray girl, you announce it. <laughs> yeah. So, guys, on March 21st, mark it in your calendars. Two weeks from today on this channel. Who are we gonna have? Chuck Dixon and Graham Nolan. Together. Together. 
That's great. Better together. <laughs> Better together. Like pineapple pizza. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not that I'm allowed to. Um, Chuck, D- Chuck Dixon wrote the first comic book I ever purchased off a of spinner rack. Nice. And what was Robin that? 2. Robin Joker's 2. Joker's okay. Wild. I remember those. My uh, I think Alan Such- Grant. Alan Grant was the uh, writer of the first comic I ever. And that Robin 2 run is so good. Mm. Oh. Well, That's Chuck Dixon could write a Robin good Brilliant. run. Yeah. Showed you Joker's, like, just how... Cr- I remember... I'll never forget that issue. Like, where he walks in, Mr. Freeze and his goons, and he just shoots Mr. Freeze and uh, takes over his operation. Robin, Robin uh, 2... Now, if Robin you pick up a Robin... Cry of the Huntress, wasn't it? Pick up a Robin book now, you get him having a... Uh, he's bringing flowers to his gay lover. Yeah, he's sucking cum. <laughs> yeah. oh. After being with Stephanie for almost 30 years, now he's sucking dick. Yeah, him and spoiler. Mm. And that was always the thing. Now she, now he loves her like a friend, too. So. Like his sister. No. Oh. Bill Mantlow wrote the first comic I, I purchased with Sal Buscema. As the artist, and wow, I'm way older than you, so it was Marvel Team Up Forty Two. I don't see this new. By the way, I don't see this new Robin comic lasting three months. Last, well, I would, I, I, I would say they'll probably keep it going longer than it should. So I'll give it up to thirty issues max. It's not on the sales charts, and that's bad for DC because the only wow. thing on sales charts for them are fucking Batman, oh, Batman books. books. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dude, one busted geez. the sales chart. Uh, Flash, you brought that up. Superman's back. If you want to, uh, it's in the private chat, X Ray Girl. Yeah, is he it, sucking yeah. cock as well? Right, What'd you say it. about X Ray Girl? What? What did huh? you say about X-ray girl? Hey, that's a, a wife husband thing. Okay, yeah. let's not oh let's not bring God. that up. <laughs> not nice. I will say real quick about that picture is like some of my favorite spectacular books were them together, but they don't need to be in a relationship for that. No, like it should be her and him and MJ still. It's so stupid. But MJ's got some dude and a couple of kids with him now, or something. Yep. As- uh, she's in a blended family now with a man of color and his children. So, then why is she in the book? Uh, like, uh, yeah, they hate Peter Parker. Well, they, they hate Peter Parker. They hate traditional marriage, so they don't want to have a traditional marriage. But yeah, why if you go to them? if you go to the sales charts. And you go to number five, you'll notice that somebody is actually back on the sales charts after not being on the charts for a long time. Right there. Uh, Look at that. Superman. Superman. The straight one. Oh, ha ha. (laughs) (laughs) Straight Superman's back. uh, Yeah. And it, and it, and it's really popular again, and people are interested, or at least they're interested. I won't say really popular because there's no comic that's really popular anymore, outside of maybe uh, the Batman and Joker team up for by Mark Silvestri. Uh, that's still going on, right? Uh, da, 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 maybe Spawn. Daredevil's up there. Look at that, Daredevil. Yeah, that's uh, Chip Zdarsky's run. I guess it's good. I haven't read it. I heard it's okay. I I can't. I, you know, he he clammed up, but remember back in the day, he, he was getting in the, you know, 2017, the comic cre- creatives were freaking horrible. They were horrible, and they were all piling on, but a couple shut their mouths and just started writing books, and he's one of them. Yeah, you know, his uh, his Spider-Man run, uh, he did a, he picked, they gave him Spectacular. Those first five issues are dog shit, but yep. something happened with him. I don't know what it was, but after that fifth issue, that book got really good, and he he really did a great job with that run. There's about 25 issues there, just, I think, solid stuff. Uh, yeah, I think he's okay. I just, I, man, I stopped. I, I, like, I'm fine with stopping. I can go back now and read my complete Daredevil run. Or my complete Fantastic Four run. That's what or I've my, been doing. Yeah, I'm just like that's that's all. I've I been need. reading Golden Age Captain America. 
lately. Uh, I'm I've gotten into Bon Dessine, the French comics. I'm like deep into that one, way down that rabbit hole, and that shit is good. Uh, so good. Uh, those are the best comics made on Earth. People are asking, what are the actual numbers sold? We don't know. We don't know. We don't can know. kind of guess off of the old Comicron numbers. So I would say anything in the top eight is around a hundred thousand issues, maybe. Yep. But maybe. then it quickly falls off. So by the time you get down to twenty three, you're probably at like thirty thousand, maybe. And then when you get down to forty, you're probably in twenty thousand. Now it's you know. Yeah, I would argue something like that. I would argue it's it's like maybe just the top three are over a hundred thousand at this point. I mean, yeah. we don't even know how many comic stores there are. Yeah, it's tough. To, like we can't really say. Yeah, I'm just guesstimating. Yeah, and that's all they can do, and they try to spin it up, but uh, there is no diamond. Uh, it's multiple distributors now, and they're not sharing their numbers. And I think one of them runs through an actual comic store at this point. Which is, oh, thank God! I'm so glad I'm not selling comics anymore <laughs> no tom taylor is not writing the superman he's writing the miniseries the gay one yes in a miniseries <laughs> now thank god if you're gonna write a miniseries better it be gay uh, oh no when, when i look at this turtles and april caption i feel like i'm going to get uh slaves built this country speech question are other members of the view going to star in the new tmnt film Hard pass, says Mark, for $20. <laughs> we can but hope. That's right. So the other big news, I don't know if it was big, is Star Trek Discovery getting canceled. But it's getting a fourth season that was supposed to come out this year, but didn't come out this year. <laughs> I thought it was getting five in total. It it was and and you know uh, to be fair like Midnight's Edge had, had been always saying it's going to get five because that's what they originally agreed upon with Netflix but Netflix backed out of the deal so CBS had to pay for their own uh, budgets have been slashed for all the theories series sorry um, I know that Picard was done on a shoestring budget and it still looks better than freaking everything the best uh, part of this is the people begging everyone to stop making fun of the show getting canceled because for five people <laughs> oh, it made a so difference fun. <laughs> i saw some person go uh can you please have some respect for the people that like discovery i'm like well discovery didn't have any respect for star trek so why should we have fucking respect for that yeah it, it didn't have any respect it served as a platform for uh, that yeah. tried to influence elections actual like real life elections they had the whole cast on on zoom calls uh supporting uh stacy abrams and and biden and it's like this is a tv show this is a science fiction tv show about like coming together being together and getting over petty shit like that and they just go out and support it alex kurtzman went out and called it a platform he never fucking watched old star trek he never paid attention to anything this thing messed up with canon and they had to basically reboot the series every damn season i think the last two they finally didn't reboot it but yeah but gary this season is going to be more like the star trek that people are used to <laughs> ah yes this one will be the the optimistic soundtrack <laughs> oh, optimistic so star trek uh, every season they said it yeah the flash every single season every season of picard <laughs> i've never watched it i've skipped this entirely thanks to you guys the second season of discovery is going to be more optimistic like the star trek we know the next season of discovery is going to be more optimistic like the Fuck off. yeah the, before they announced strange new worlds uh star trek discovery season one two and three and picard season two they said this will return to a more optimistic Star Trek. They just kept saying it over and over again. They've repeated that as much as they've repeated that they're going to make a Star Trek 4 in the theaters. Can you imagine the amount of wasted resources there? Five seasons of that, three seasons of Picard. Not that all of those things are the same of quality. I just mean that we could have had just like eight seasons of an amazing TV show that could have existed. Yes. Well, I know that... Um... Netflix were committed to three seasons. Yes. With Discovery. And I know that uh, after the first season of Discovery, they wanted out the deal then. 
Yes. Uh, and then something <laughs> happened behind the scenes because the when Discovery started, the rights were somehow split between the Kelvin universe and what CBS had because CBS and Paramount weren't technically together, although they were under one umbrella. Um, so why does this still happen? That I don't if 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 they're still if they're together again now, why is there still this twenty five percent thing? I, I think that's been phased out. Uh and I and I and I truly believe that the people who make this, um the and I'm not talking about crew members, I'm talking about the bean counters, Alex Kurtzman, uh, don't give a shit. They just want to make their own thing. They don't care about canon. They think it's restrictive. They don't care about the fans uh, and behind the scenes. Some people, not all who worked on it, some people did push certain Trek. I won't use the word influencers because there is no influence in Trek, but they used other content creators to attack fans. That's my, that's always been my issue. It's one thing to make a shitty TV show and that's fine. I can call it a shitty TV show. You can like it. We can still be friends. I don't care. That that doesn't bother me. We'll just disagree on Star Trek Discovery. But when it was used to uh, throw pejoratives at fans, because, uh, you know, we'll question. I, I'll speak for myself. I'll question somebody who watches the show's taste. If they like it, I'll go, well, I don't know if I'm going to take your recommendation for a movie or dinner or anything. <laughs> rip, but, um, rip your boys. Out. <laughs> yeah. Right. But <laughs> your, your boys. Out. Well, Hey, Zach is great on comic books. I'm not taking any advice on relationships or star Trek from him. Okay. All I know is what I he's on. He's on board for that. season. He's on board for Picard season. Three, he, is, he is. He is. He is. Which oh. I, I love. I, I just I pretend the first Zach, two seasons way. don't exist. No, that's that's Why? The, that two nothing exists <laughs> and and we'll talk about that but when it comes to like star trek discovery and its fans in particular i was on a live stream yesterday with uh drinker and rmb and dave cullen and salty nerd podcast and matthew kadish and the podcast guys and terry metallis uh and it it was Poor Terry had to walk through a minefield because, listen, he can't, like, he can't endorse me. <laughs> I'm blocked by fucking Star Trek. He can't endorse <laughs> he can't endorse. He can't endorse any of us. Like, God, he can't even endorse RMB. Uh, Isn't that ridiculous, though, yeah. that he can't do that? Like, yeah. That it just sucks. because a, a little mob that doesn't even watch this shit. Let's be honest. All these people on Twitter that are saying, like, you know, they're big fans of this stuff. Well, then how come the ratings don't reflect that? Like, obviously, this little mob that's going after people don't bring you anything. They don't bring you anything. Because In fact, if anything, <clears throat> Hogwarts Legacy is showing you that if you just ignore them, uh, there's direct benefits to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the same time, Hogwarts Legacy is a stupid trans character, is a barmaid. And it has gay marriage in the 1880s, which is daft. And that's pan that again is just pandering stuff. Oh, there's a lot of pandering in that. <laughs> game. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Just, so uh, just the, the, the Hogwarts Castle. But... Oh, yeah, the game's great. I love the game. I loved it. But don't don't for one moment think that it's not, you know, it's not full of the same Dude. sort of oh, uh, yeah. people that, that follow Chink, all this kind of Chink crap. Ugers in the game. <laughs> Why, somebody <laughs> fucks a horse? Uh, a buffalo. Let pandemic. me find the let me find the picture. Yeah. I oh randomly I was exploring in my and I like found this guy sitting under a a buffalo. I thought there was a bull. And uh the buffalo's sitting on his lap. <laughs> and <laughs> and it's wagging his tail and the guy's like kicking his leg out. I'm like, "What the fuck is going on here?" But uh All right, so I found it. Discovery gets it gets canceled and there's there I think there's a pretty interesting debate going on around like not just Star Trek but like when something that's been so shit for so long to fans, to fans, all fans. By the way, you want to make Star Trek to all fans. What Star Trek Discovery and Kurtzman did is they they chose a side when Star Trek never had sides. Star Trek appealed to everybody. Uh, and I certainly aware of what the themes are, but I think they get greatly misinterpreted. Robert Meyer Burnett pointed that out the other day. Uh, they get greatly misinterpreted. But um, did you find the picture? Not yet. You did? I can't hear you nod. Oh, okay. 
Now the the portrait is oh, moving because yeah, we're in the this. wizarding world. Yeah. Um. So wasn't it the guy that got killed? No, he he did a spell and he should have said a. He should have used an A instead of F and. Uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Bulk appears. Mr. Bull like sat on his lap. Um. Okay. <laughs> but you got to see it moving because the bull's like wagging its tail and he's like moving his leg. And I'm like, what the hell is going on here? Oh, you know what's going on there. Yep. This game is uh -huh. super progressive, so we might as well uh -huh. add some animal love. But yeah, why not? Why not? Like Ugh. a panta. Is he Spanish? <laughs> I know what you're talking about, ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh no <laughs> in other news chank uger is moving to spain yeah uh, so st okay this is the funniest part about this i was cracking up when i was making my video star trek discovery will end with the upcoming fifth season of paramount plus variety has learned in addition the fifth and final season will now debut in early 2024 as opposed to this year as originally thought no and announced by the way filming is mostly complete on season five, but according to an individual with knowledge of the situation, uh, there will be some additional filming that has yet to take place. In addition, Paramount is planning to send the show off in style with events planned in certain key markets. You want to guess what, what those are? <laughs> California. Yeah. Are they are they gay orgies? <laughs> I was gonna say. Or struggle sessions. They're gonna have struggle sessions. Maybe both. It'll be a orgy struggle session uh throughout the year throughout the year throughout this year or next year i i want everyone in the chat to remember this remember that they said they are going to make events for this final season i call bullshit so hard on this <laughs> what events it'll be like a zoom event or some shit it'll be a live stream event leading up to the uh final season's release further details will be released at a later date I think they're kicking this can down the road. And then Sonequa Martin Green talks about how uh progressive everything is, but let's go to uh the where's the second paragraph? Oh, the know. final trailer for Dungeons and Dragons has been released. Uh hang on. Oh, I watched second. it before this. Oh, here, okay, here's the here's the most important paragraph <clears throat> here. Uh Discovery has been the flagship of modern Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only fucking show. Uh, series since it launched in 2017 at the time when Paramount Plus was still known as CBS All Ass. The series, by the <laughs> way, Paramount Plus is, is rebranding again. Uh, the series kicked off the rebooted Star Trek, rebooted, very interesting term there, uh, TV universe, and led to a successful spin off, Strange New Worlds. Really? With, uh, okay. Nobody watched it. I watched three episodes of it and dipped. I didn't think it was awful, but I also didn't think it was, I thought it was boring. Yeah, I, think, it's, uh, I thought it was boring. Up until Picard, you could call it the best of the shit. It was like not shark shit. It was just regular shit. It had a lot of problems with the ship in general, too. Like, look, what is that? Like, the ship, everyone's got these gigantic rooms and everything looks so nice. Like, mm -hmm. I just I, I just didn't like it. It doesn't uh, look. These are ships which people live on. The ship doesn't look lived on. They do, these are meant to be exploratory vessels. They look like pristine military vessels. You know, that's why I love the next generation. It brought carpet in. It was carpet for fuck's sake. You know, on the it, it was meant to be more homely because this was a family ship. The Galaxy yeah. class was a family ship. And it looked more homely. It looked like, yeah, this is where people understand that they're going to be out in the uh in the universe for a while but these ships oh my god yeah the I'm amazed people, you just people just shooting themselves in the head with phaser pistols because you so all you see is these fucking austere metallic just awful fucking thing nah man enterprise d is a moving city basically yeah and like the original ship that's not what that was that was a i mean they were out there for five years it's it's like a submarine basically like it's not it's not supposed to be a place it's not a cruise ship you know i just i don't know i i had big problems with that show but compared to discovery oof. yeah fucking discovery is pretty bad i was talking uh i 
look at somebody yesterday about it, and we were trying to compare Discovery and Picard season one and two. And it's like, well, okay, Picard season one and two is because I have two more. I have two parameters. I have multiple. I just make up my own fucking rules, okay? Because I can. Uh, but uh, this is something we discussed this. I discussed this with my next video with Mahler. That's a tease right there. But there's parameters of failure, right? There's things can still make money, but have massive damage to the franchise. Amazing Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man 3 is a great example. Of Spider-Man 3 is a better example because it was the highest grossing of the franchise and it ended it. So you could still have stuff within that that destroys previous established canon. So Star Trek Discovery by itself is just the worst written show probably ever. Uh, Picard season one and two is the worst written show that also does massive damage to a beloved character. Oh, franchise. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. massive damage. Um, that you have to like, even, even in the Picard season three that we all like, you have to kind of wince when they bring stuff up. Uh, it's completely understandable. And like I said, by the end, two of my three biggest complaints very quickly get retconned. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, baby. Um, but by the end, like the five people who would bitch about that, I don't, I don't even think they can bitch about it because there's a, <clears throat> there's a nice little treat at the end. I think you'll like Will Wheaton comes back. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, the series kicked did you, off. Did you see him at the end of Picard season two? Uh, uh, yes, he was I great. Hello, I'm a god. Let's What? That was a great impression. It that was, was exactly. Yeah, it's, it's exactly what it was like. I was just like, how is Will Wheaton? When did he become like the worst actor in history? He's just got his grin on his face and he's just screaming. It's hello. I what the fuck is this? Uh, I'm so glad I just watched clips of that season too. Man. Well, they, yeah, they finally gave Beverly a son she can be proud of, though. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. We know whose jeans were the lacking jeans. I'm looking at you, Jack. Um, I'm looking at you. So, okay. But I, I love this part. So, uh, Discovery has been the flagship of Modern Trek series since it was launched in 2017. At the time, Paramount Plus was still known as CBS All Ass. The series kicked off rebooted Star Trek series universe and led to the successful spinoff Star Trek Strange New Worlds, which is currently prepping for its second and probably final season. The show is chalked up a number of firsts for the franchise, including having a black female protagonist in Michael Burnham. Uh, it is also is that wrong? Whoa. That is very wrong. It's Jennifer Lawrence. The first one. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, there was a young lady called <laughs> Lieutenant Nahura who was a black female protagonist. Uh, I believe she was a protagonist. She wasn't even the first black female captain that was in Star Trek The Next Generation Season 1. Yep. Who actually went through the Academy uh, quicker than Kirk. Yeah. And, the didn't Admiral, commit, oh, and she also didn't commit mutiny. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Like... And the Admiral of the whole of the Starfleet was a black female in The Next yep. Generation. I could, I could go on. The but show because, acts like it's the oh. first everything. I mean, the first the first Star Trek series had, for the time, one of the most groundbreaking things was the biracial kiss. Dude, like it's that, in history books. That's not yeah. just, like, television history. That's American history. But they try to act like this show is is just the first everything. It's oh. it's so disrespectful. It, it, it's, it's, it's trying to rewrite history. It's what they do with everything at the minute. Like what they were doing with the Rings of Power, first black female dwarf, which is total bullshit. But they go on. They go on as it is also prominently uh, featured LGBTQIA plus characters in a way no pre not previously seen in a Star Trek Bullshit. Show. It was in uh, Next Generation with the genderless race that Riker was with. 
Uh, that was a DS, whole DS9 episode. with the Mirror Universe. Kira. She was gay. Yeah. It was alluded to that uh, O'Brien and Bashir were gay in the Mirror Universe as well. I just thought Bashir was just gay the whole time. It's amazing, though, that <laughs> did actually call a character Dr. Gay because, <laughs> because that's the only thing that he was known for was being gay. You mean, uh, yeah, uh, Stamets? Stamets? No, the, Stamets, uh, Stamets' boyfriend, Dr. Gay. Dr. Gay, yeah. Oh, Little Ricky yeah. from My So-Called Life, yeah. He just comes in <clears> and he's just like, hi, everyone, I just want you to know that I'm gay, Okay. I'm super gay. You won't see me for four more episodes. Okay, tally who? Bye. <laughs> yep. Oh, and then they then they killed their gays. They buried their gays. Sorry. <laughs> and then they brought them back to life. Um, a, a mushroom, a poopy mushroom, brought them back to life and pooped them out. <laughs> 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 I'm not kidding. Oh my god. I'm gonna have to go back and watch this someday for a video because so many dumb things happen, and so it's like. The dumb count is unbelievable per episode. Uh, Mahler, if he cared about Star Trek and liked Star Trek and did videos, he would never be finished. Ever. <laughs> Ever. Ever It'll be finished. It will happen someday. I'm planning my Star Trek adventures at some point. Oh, there you go. Um, so that, yeah, that's all I can uh, take of that. Um, Flash, you like Star Trek Picard Season 3? Yeah, quite a bit. I like it wow. a lot. How's it like feel? It <laughs> That's what I've been getting yeah. called. Yeah. No, Gary's there. Gary's puppet. Somebody called me. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. Uh, by the way, Flash, I need you to submit uh, who you're going to have on your stream this Saturday so I can sign off on it. Okay. Just wanted to let that. Uh, but actually, I, I'm supposed to submit my list to Jeremy. So Get in agree know. with something I think. Oh, my God. Yes. I think it's great. I like uh I like a lot. You can definitely tell that his favorite Star Trek movie is the third one too, which is also my favorite Star Trek movie. And uh I, I think it's a like a big love letter to a lot of things Star Trek. It's it's great. It's what I've been wanting forever. Yep. Are you talking search for Spock? Yeah, I love Search for Spock. It's my favorite Star Trek movie. I like Search for it's Spock. Flawed, it's my favorite. I, like I love it. that movie. I like it. I think it's uh, yeah, Captain, I think. I mean, the easy is answer is, is Wrath of Khan, oh, right? But God. I mean, that movie doesn't exist without Wrath of Khan. So I don't. Well, the, the, the those three are like one. I mean, it's that's the, really it's one Wrath trilogy. Khan, it's getting Spock back, and then the journey back home, the voyage home. They're all yeah. yeah they're a trilogy, and they're freaking. Tril I mean, I love all those. Those are that is my favorite Star Trek to watch. Period. But my favorite yes. of the three is Search for Spock. I love that movie. I love uh, Bones in that movie, basically playing two characters. Oh yeah, I love I love a lot of the way the ships move in that. Like some of my favorite scenes, like are the escape from space dock. Yep. Like, make imagine taking that slow ass scene and making it like a nail biter, like they did. I thought it was great. It was brilliant. It was brilliant. They did them on the, like. You have the budget. death of the Enterprise. Yeah, oh, yeah, and that's the original Enterprise. That's oh it's a refit, but that's still the old Enterprise, oh still the OG. Oh, I got, yeah, I got all those. I got the Dude, two what? box sets. As did you get the the motion picture box set? Uh, I did. No, I did too. Great. I had William Shatner sign the poster in it. Nice. Oh. He signed my Mego, my Kirk Mego. Oh, is when is Bill Shatner's birthday? Is it the March twenty first? Is it going to be on the same day? I don't know. But that scene where the Enterprise dies, I think that's my that's gotta be my favorite scene in all the movies. Love uh, that when, scene when, where when Kirk, Kirk's looking Kirk at it. Spock, Kirk and Spock when, when Spock's dying. That's the best scene. That's the it best is, scene. but my my personal favorite scene okay. is the he's just looking at it. What have I done, Bones? Oh I know. What have I done? But it, the great thing about that, which has been completely lost in Star Trek, was the fact that the Enterprise was a character in itself. Yes. Yep. yep. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. 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 And that's a hundred percent true. Like the Enterprise D again, it was a character all of its own. Enterprise E. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Oh. No, it was just a ship. Then suddenly, Enterprise just became a ship. They should have just 
refit or rebuilt the and had it look like D. I know they they talk about Enterprise E in Picard. I'll just say that. Do they? I know they that do. the F is going to be. <laughs> so anyway, do, 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 well, do, the, do, do, this is do, do, the bridge do, of lead. You know? No, uh, it, the the fourth episode is really damn good, and the fifth episode is a banger, dude. Absolute. Oh, I do the, they? I thought the third I episode thought they, was superb. I thought it was great. It's good. It's really good. It gets better as it goes on. Um, there's a slower episode later on. There's explanations for it, but there's a lot of exposition. But it like leads into absolutely sticking the landing absolutely yeah i i want to ask you spoilers but i don't want it spoiled nope well i mean nah nah because like dude especially coming up all right at least tell us this does palpatine return yes somehow somehow, <laughs> somehow. <laughs> somehow he returns. Yeah. somehow he returns Somehow, uh, like Palpatine, like returned and stuff. You oh need to God. see a red carpet interview with JJ Abrams, where someone says, "You know that somehow Palpatine returned." Like, was that you? Did you write that? And he's like, "No, <laughs> no." <laughs> <laughs> me? Yeah, but the Terry Metalis, man, right. I don't. This guy, anything he makes, I'll probably watch it if it's if it's Star Trek and he directs it. Like, because uh, you can really see that this guy loves the show. Like yep. loves that franchise. I'd it's, like to see him tackle some new material. Like now that we've seen him play with characters, it'd be nice if he got he well, get like if he got like a Titan or you know then... he, he he said I, he said this publicly already. So at the end of the series, he does set up a potential spinoff that I would absolutely watch. That could, that uh, we talked about it yesterday, but I think Captain it would be Wolf. Great. Uh, I can't say. But um, they've been wanting to do that for a long. At least, yeah, he's been Worf is brilliant in this. Um, but it could be episodic and a lot of fun, like a lot of fun. And I would watch it if Terry was in charge. And yes, he does love Star Trek. He is a fan. He is one of us. And uh, I give him all the credit in the world for coming in that live stream yesterday. <laughs> and I hope it doesn't get him in any trouble. And I understand. Listen, you gotta un you gotta protect. I, I didn't have a problem with what he, he was out to protect the Star Trek Discovery fans. And I certainly have a rebuttal for that, but we're trying to like, you know, bring fandoms together. And it, the, the whole argument is I don't care. No, none of us care. None of us here care if you like something. Uh, that's great. That's fine. We'll disagree on it. We'll debate on it, but we're not going to, we're not the ones throwing out. You're a, you're a bigot. You're a misogynist. <laughs> uh, you're a no, Nazi. You're for Just not liking Star Trek Discovery, you know, uh, yeah, it, it's that that's not the the, the pejoratives you hear from us. Uh, I generally, yeah, again, I'll question your taste, but I leave it at there. I, I don't care what people like or not, don't like, but I will. But I have the right to say something is trash, and, and it doesn't hurt people's fee-fees. And you know, Hollywood needs to grow thicker skin. They need to get a set of balls because they are in this new era where they don't control the information as much as they used to. So they're going to start hearing a lot of criticism, a lot. And you know what a lot of it is? It's people who actually give a shit, and it's not even done in a harsh way. It's, but they take it in a harsh way when it's just constructive. It's like, hey, I really like this thing. It would be, why'd you do this? You know, And maybe there's an explanation, maybe there isn't. But before, it's just been, well, you don't like Star Trek, you're just a bigot. Remember when Joe Schumacher... Fucked up Batman and Robin. And he and he was just like, I'm I'm really sorry you didn't enjoy it. I really tried to make something that you'd like. And if I've missed the mark, I do apologize, but I just wanted something that hopefully you'd like. He didn't go around calling everyone a bigger or a Nazi or a white supreme <laughs> or no. Yeah, he made the biggest was... he made the biggest piece of shit. He I, did, but he owned it, and everybody's yeah, yeah. got respect for him. Uh, Even yeah, George Clooney apologized for that yeah. movie. Yes, yeah, yeah. I'm the man that killed Batman. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the guy oh. that killed the Batman franchise. You know, when Karen Gillan came out, and you know, kind of took the piss out of that that you know that poster, which wasn't entirely her fault because she didn't Photoshop it, but that was still fun. That's like how you interact. 
yeah. be a little self-deprecating, have a little fun with it. She it was totally classy and kind of fun, makes her kind of cool. You know what I mean? Uh yeah. when she did that. Imagine going out of your way to make that woman unattractive. I know. Well, that is something. That's the Disney marketing department. Because she is a, their... she is a beautiful woman. Yeah, she is. When she's in her stripper gram outfit in the 11th hour. Yeah. She's the best part of that Jumanji movie. Yep. I never saw it. It's worth you, seeing. You should she's watch in, it. She's in like in a tank top and shorts the whole movie. Yeah. I mean, we don't get things like that very much anymore. Nope. I don't. We, we I got don't. April O'Neil. I don't gravitate to the rock in movies. I didn't see the second one. I've only seen the first one that he did. I didn't think it was awful. Thought some some of it was all right. Yeah, I liked it. I don't know about the second one. I I've seen it. I think I saw the second one, but I kind of forgot. It. <laughs> Somehow I forgot. <laughs> well, that's yeah. actually encouraging if you didn't hate it. At least if you forgot about it, I feel like you didn't hate it. I guess so. Yeah. Some say that's worse. I don't know. Apathy. Mm. <laughs> Hard to just, say. I don't think it needed a sequel to be on. I not some movies just don't need sequels. I I think mm. Blade Runner. I think it was just like a fun movie to watch. <laughs> Nothing True. crazy happened in it. It was just like, oh yeah, I can watch it again in like a year or so. You know what didn't need a sequel, Gary? Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> didn't need the one, two, three, four, five. Independence Day. Let's keep going. Let's keep this winning wheel spinning. Yep. Wait, there was a sequel to... Oh, my God. I didn't even know that. Yeah. No, <laughs> that one, I'm not going to blame you for not knowing, because that was a, another one of those farts in the wind. Uh, yeah. Uh, I haven't seen the... That. By the way, I haven't seen the director's cut. You haven't oh, seen it? No. Oh, Ever? Dude. No. Oh, wow. Fan, fake fan. It's good. <laughs> It is the single most Star Trek movie of the Star Trek movies. Dude, is this is more Star than Trek. anyone that, who's ever watched Discovery. This is more Star Trek than they'll ever see. <laughs> right. Right. But uh, Star Trek. Yeah, I love, those, old, old I love those movies so much. <laughs> yeah. I do too. Those are my favorite movies. I love those movies. That, those are what got me into Star Trek for those movies. So would you say uh, they're a good thought in place for people? I think you can. Yeah, I think you can. What is what is typically can. seen as the best place to start for Star Trek? Well, the, the first series. Thanks. The original series. All that first season is so good. I'm like 12 yeah. episodes in now. Because the character dynamic uh, doesn't even get equal. Like I, Next Generation is good, and I like it, but the character dynamic between Spock, Kirk, and Bones is unequaled. Unequaled. Yeah. I'm just amazed that this was in the 60s and the writing that they have is just so it's so forward. A lot of the stuff that they kind of explore, you can still relate it to today. Oh, yeah, it's it's they, they, that's when you were getting like the best of the best. You had Twilight Zone going on before that. Then you had Star Trek, uh, some of the best writing in American TV. Yeah. Doctor Who doing Prisoner. stuff on Prisoner. Just like British stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like amazing writing that stands cool. up today. Uh, yeah, Prisoner I mean, absolutely stands up. Oh, today. yeah. I mean, that is because it deals with Gary. This is going to really shock you, but it kind of deals with timeless themes. What's timeless as? Timeless themes are things which are ever present in our society mm. that they can evolve to take different forms and whatnot, but they are still ever present because thematically, they will always exist. You mean dated is not the way to go? Current day? Dating Current day? the show? Not the, not the way to make a timeless classic, no. So if I make my movie about whatever's happening literally today in, in, in the span of a couple of hours, you'll say it'll age? Like having Among Us turn up in Glass Onion? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's a great example. It oh. did, it did. Oh. Yeah, and what's funnier is that COVID turns up in the film as like a plot point, and then it's dropped entirely, and all what? it can do is age. There's no reason for it to be there at all. Yeah, 
but yeah, he's playing Among Us with a bunch of people, and he's like, "Look at me with my Among Us. Don't you guys like Among Us?" And I, I swear to God, in like five years, people will be like, "What even is that video game?" It's, uh, it's like Angry Birds. I remember Angry Birds. Angry, Angry Birds, Birds, the movie, Birds. which starred yes. Patrick Stewart. Oh, <laughs> you guys remember that, um... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. I don't even a... know. <laughs> oh, no. Do you guys remember that Flash game that was you were a bird, Flappy Bird? Do you remember that? No. Flappy Bird, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. It was like yeah. wildfire, and then the guy got like a serious amount of hate mail because people got so frustrated with the game. Didn't he like shut it down or he sold it or whatever? Because he was just like scared of how many people wanted to kill him. I think it's a frustrating it the, game. I think he pulled it from the store. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. That was crazy. And that's the thing. Most people probably in chat are probably like Flappy Bird, the fuck? <laughs> it's like the thing. If you make your movies, your stories about things that pass real quickly, then they can uh, age like the milk, as people say. The milk. The milk. Age like milkers. They're in, they're like tired. Milf Manor. Age like milk Manor. Oh. <laughs> You're still going on that. How is it? Dude, the last episode was insane. <laughs> One of the contestants, I call her Denise, her real name Charlene, but I call her Denise. <laughs> She, she was kind of trying to force her son. <laughs> this like, title, sorry. Her I son was it. just like, I am, I am fucking done with this place. I don't want to fuck an old woman. And then his mom's just going, yeah, yeah, but you should really kind of like stay and maybe, maybe, you know, fuck some old birds for, you know. And he's just like, no, 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 I'm out of here. And he, walk, he leaves, he leaves the show. Damn. Good but for him. Next week. They're bringing in we'll be back. family members of the women. So they could be ex-husbands. They could be daughters. And then the daughters are going to try and uh, seduce the guys who's after the mums. Can we not? <laughs> can, we, can we nuke it? Nuke it, please. Nuke it. This is the end of society as we know it. Also, having and why that's a good thing at the end of something clearly disastrous is always funny. It is. It's going to show... Uh... The value of age and dating when you're dating someone significantly younger that's male. When I was doing uh, my uh, Woke Hollywood video, I just put, and that's a good thing. And fuck, so many articles came in quotes and just like it was all <laughs> access media articles. It was very easy. Uh, I agree with this headline. I, I think it's, a, I mean, it's a bad thing for the channel because I w really wanted to review this movie. And does anybody think six more months is going to make it good? No. <laughs> I'm going to make it worse. <laughs> it's going to make it worse. <laughs> These writers under pressure. Well, cool. so, um, we talked about this uh, on our uh, EFAP for Atomic Heart, but like, you know, we often say half baked uh, is like a way of describing like something that was rushed out and not properly finished. We're thinking of overcooked. As like another way to go over like the marbles might end up being super overcooked because it's like they're desperate to make sure it's good and so several people have several ideas and they'll shove a bunch of shit in there they would have it was never going to be good guys <laughs> like you just you no. gotta release it rip the bad date off get it out what if they're delaying it to make it even worse <laughs> well, like, i think that's happening they'll have a completed movie and they'll be like no we need to refilm this portion this portion this portion they take shit out put it in take shit out put it in take shit out but move it around change this change that and eventually it's just this like mess of a think of doing that with a meal like my fit really fucked it my favorite quote about this movie is from kevin feige where he said i was watching this movie and it gave me chills i haven't had since i watched the first avengers movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> When wow. somebody says was, that, you what, just you just like know watching bullshit in you. Was was like Bree giving him a hand job during the movie? Yeah, or? it might have been. Yeah, wow. It's like seeing Thor and Cap Iron Man first time yeah. on screen together. But is it though? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, but, the answer is, is no. A lot of the people is no. Characters from who... two shows nobody watched. Yep. A lot of people knew who the Avengers were before the Avengers movie came out in terms of general public, right? That's a huge benefit you have. Who the fuck knows who any of these characters in the Marvels are? I was going back and looking at the old Nielsen uh, streaming ratings, and the Disney Plus shows, do the for the most part, do the same thing the movies do. They'll end up on the chart, and then they'll be gone the next week, right? And And their place on the chart went down as each series came out to the point where i think it fluctuated between miss marvel 
not making i'm talking the overall chart it doesn't it, miss marvel didn't make the overall chart and i think she hulk topped out at 10 on the overall chart for like a week so they're having it's the, it's the same pattern it is can you answer me a question gary i can try no. or i'll make something up how does a show that has over a hundred million views on it <laughs> not make the nielsen top 15 uh, and finish behind a show that didn't have a hundred million views. Yes, How? I don't know. Oh, neither do I. I'm. I'd like to call that Amazon math. <laughs> We're talking about Rings of Power, which had one hundred million viewers, according to Amazon, on its first episode, but finished the first well. Episode. I mean, why well the, behind the boys. <laughs> why would why would the company that made these lie about their viewership? It's insane. As, I mean, sorry, Yellow Flash. Um, I don't know because the boys didn't get a hundred million views like all together. <laughs> so I don't know how one episode got it. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's crazy. Did you see my, my video on Amazon after yeah. six months? Yeah. Me an email. Tell us about that. Well, I, mean, I got it. Like I put my review up and uh, I did some things because I wanted the review to stay up. So I didn't use any profanity. I didn't use any bad language. I didn't, you know, when I say slag it off, I was critical, but I didn't use, you know, like, you fuck, this is this fucking stupid, that sort of stuff. And I gave it a two out of five in case they just mass deleted one star reviews uh, for, you know, for, for review bombing. So I thought, give it a two. So it's not a one, give it a two. And then just put a critical review. And then six months after I got an email saying, Thank you for your review. Your review is now up on our site. Thanks. <laughs> Six months later, I get an email going, uh, you're in breach of our uh, terms of service as regards to posts, and we have removed your post, and if you continue to do this, then you will lose your posting privileges on mm -hmm. Amazon. I've only done one post on Amazon, <laughs> and it was my uh, Rings of Power review. So I actually went back in my emails to where it was posted and we're like, oh, thanks for posting this review. And I clicked the link to it. Sorry, this page does not exist. And curious. I got a threat, a threat saying, if you dare write a, a uh, critical review of our products again, we will remove the, uh, the ability for you to post critical reviews. I'm curious in future to do a positive like 10 out of 10, but uh, and then maybe write something that sounds legitimate for a paragraph, like oh, you know, the characters, blah, blah, blah. but then maybe just have a sentence where it's like, I'm actually just giving this 10 out of 10 because I want to arbitrarily boost the score because I'd like to hate it to oh, love bomb that's, it. That's but every journalist review, yep. you know, yeah. Well, my point is to say it explicitly and then just see if Amazon ever take any action, they probably won't. It, no, I don't think so. Well, I like the guy who uh, on Ant Man. Gave it a five star, but then said, it's the best Marvel movie in phase five. It's the best Marvel movie since the last Marvel movie. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Um, no, Reminds I bet you that's still up now. That's got to be still. That's such a good review. <laughs> is that is that your Thor review? That was hilarious. That was that was my Thor review. And then that person said that, uh, but he did it for Ant-Man as a five-star review. So it would stay up on the reviews. And it did. I was like, I was like That's, <laughs> either you're completely lame or that is a, the best troll. I'm going to choose to say it, see it as the best troll. We are so lucky to have Marvel movie, current Marvel movie in our life. Yep. Yeah. I can't wait till the post credit scene is the best part. Yay. Product. You gotta uh, stay for him. They did that again with this with Ant Man. Yeah, dude. <laughs> gotta stay for that end credit scene. That end credit oh, scene where we see it. Owen Wilson and Loki and Jonathan Majors leading into a show with no release date that's also been delayed. Like, how can we not have a release date for Loki? Things done. <laughs> well, been done forever. So bad. That was their big popular series. Smaller, big popular series. I was the one that did the best, right? Out of the lot. Yeah. yeah. Yep. <clears throat> by, a, by a fair margin. Uh, him and that female version had zero chemistry. Zero. Yep. Zero chemistry. He was pretty awful. But to be honest with you, I, I didn't quite like him that much in the show either. He's a weird, he, he he's was not a weird very good. version of Loki. 
Hey, I was told, you, you know, Sylvie was amazing. You know how I know? How do you know? They told they us. told us. The oh. Multiple times. <laughs> They're saying it's canon that she's amazing. You're amazing. You made fun of it for ages on uh, when we were covering ad Man, but like, uh, you know, you make fun of like Shuri and all these these amazing Riri being these incredible minds at such a young age. Then it's like Cassie Lang is like she's also amazing, and, and even Scott is like, well, you're like how? And then uh, you have Hank being like, she's a pretty smart girl. She read some of my notes and <laughs> invented like, a magic oh. bullshit machine. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Because she's got teats. Well, uh, she didn't. In all fairness, she couldn't act either. She couldn't emote very much uh, at all. As what did you say in your review? Do you remember? Do you even remember? Uh, I can only read like the first couple of lines because that's all that. Because they did put a little bit. I can. Uh, I can try and see uh, review Amazon reviews, but I. I put. Here we go. Uh, thank you for reviewing the Rings of Power. Here we go. So the, my title was uh, it, it was a mess and boring. Two stars out of five. Uh, I said that it, it had uh, reduced Tolkien to generic fantasy. Uh, the characters didn't feel that they were part of this world at all. Uh, the dialogue uh, was completely out of place and came across as lofty for the sake of lofty without saying anything. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I did say some parts <laughs> felt like it was written like a five-year-old. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. Big a hater. Uh, so a that's, racist thing to say. This man off this website. Place is really racist, mate. <laughs> and that's the that's all I can see that's left of that review. So, uh, Always yes. knew you were a bigot. Yeah. There was, you know, there was Confirmed. no swearing in that review at all. Like I said, I really, because I really wanted it to go up as a legitimate review and a legitimate score without giving them any excuses to delete it. Six months later, oh, by the way, I can no longer see review this when I go onto it. Really? I can no longer click on to the reviews. Wow. And then somebody sent me an email where they wanted to leave a review. And it said, you can't leave a review until you've watched the the series. Wow. So uh, there, uh, there is some... Worth it. <laughs> I think they're trying to think six months down the line, people have forgotten about it. We can do some revisionist history here. Oh. I mean, they'd Listen, be the ones in, to do it. Instead of being smart, firing everybody and bringing somebody in who can maybe fix it, they're, they're just doing what mature companies who are scared to take chances do. And that's why that's what's killing it. The, the corporatism, aside from like giving it to these two morons who had never done television before in their life, they've, They've never done a film, a full film. They wrote a partial script. That's what they have credit for. All right, what you, we what play, you need can, is for them to not care about it, so they toss it to some passionate person who wants to do it because they care about the IP. And then, you know, if that is an event that takes place, maybe you'll get something good. Maybe. They tossed it to somebody who would say yes. And uh, that that seems to be more important to find in a creative, quote-unquote creative, that is uh, more obedient than actually finding a creative who can make something good can we play uh, it's, it's a very corporate tech way of making well shit <laughs> and content uh, what i mean is for them to give up thinking it can make money right and then they toss it to some anyone who's willing to take it can let's let's play it let's play a quick game it, it was the best pitch <laughs> smaller that won it uh the guy who who uh, wrote this the story uh or screenplay for dune would have been the right person for the job, but his pitch uh, was too confusing to the suits because it was too long because he was like reciting Tolkien off a of mem out of memory, like uh... properly. Yeah, it's sad. It's a sad story, dude. Uh... <laughs> let's let's play a quick game, okay? okay. Uh, what's this character called? Um, I can't remember. Neither can I. Smaller. Well, I haven't even seen this show. <laughs> okay. Uh, Yellow Flash, have you seen this at all? No. No. Okay. X-Ray Girl probably uh, definitely hasn't. Uh, this character? Stamets. 
Okay, I could because get he's that. named after Paul Stamets, the mushroom okay. that has been on Joe, Joe Rogan. Uh, this guy, uh, Tilly, Tilly. Um, by the way, this uh, brave is, queer woman. Brave yeah, you got to add fifty pounds. She's able to beat a skinny Asian guy in a in a, in a track race on the ship. <laughs> yeah, well, and she's married with two kids and a husband, but somehow queer. Okay, yeah. Next, uh, oh. this guy is that Reese. Which one's Reese? Is it the Asian guy? Or I have the... no idea. I don't know. I That's don't, Reese. I don't no. know. Stamets, Tilly. Don't know. Don't Reese. know. That's don't Reese. Know. That is, oh my God, I heard her name. Is the black guy gay? Yeah, of course he is. Knew it. These two have got to be a team together. They've they got to be. Oh, are they gay together? Probably. Somebody told oh. me her name yesterday. I've watched all of these shows multiple times and I forgot it. It's Detmer. Detmer is the redhead. No clue. I, know, I this, just realized. This okay, I know, no, like... they all look like they're from a toothpaste commercial or an insurance commercial. They all look <laughs> sure. like they did stock photos with Simu Lu. What's with the holding each like other thing? thing? Like everyone's trying to make sure they touch. Because they're just this is this is a family. Okay, that's not families don't have to do that all the time. You know, they can just be chill. <laughs> like, uh, this character. What's this character? A uh, robot girl who died. Who whose only okay. existence was to die. Uh, but she didn't. Well, she technically didn't die. Because the character, the the woman playing her, became the new replacement for her. She just didn't want to put the makeup on for the robot. Yeah, she took the job to take the put the makeup on, but the makeup freaked her out. So she so she went, I can't do it. So they went, okay, we're just gonna be characters. And just although be Doug Jones right there puts that makeup on every day, and like, yeah, props to Doug Jones. I like Doug Jones, but. Yeah, he's wasted in the series. He would Michael have been Burnham good. and Saru. I think we can both get those. So uh one, two, three, four. I hey, know the Are you getting are... the Michael Burnham one six scale? <laughs> he's getting how is them. how is she related to Spock? How many, oh, how many women sister. did his dad fuck? Okay. No, nobody. no, adoptive sister. Adoptive, adoptive sister. Okay. Adopted foster sister who but taught you... him how to be a fucking Vulcan. Well, oh, she taught you, him how to be one. Yes. Well, yeah. They <laughs> yeah. said in one of the episodes. Yes. yes they said in one of the episodes. Uh, Spock became the Spock became the man he is today because of you, Mike. Did you know Spock was dyslexic? I remember hearing about that. Yeah, that makes no sense. And did you know that he had absolutely no control of his emotions all the time? And was constantly having outbursts and singing, and turbo lifts. Oh, yeah. Didn't they say, oh, yeah, because he smiled two times in the pilot. So, yeah, he couldn't control his In emotions. the pilot, that was decanonized and then yeah. recanonized yeah. much yes. later. <laughs> well, re yeah, recanonized in, in uh, another episode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they I did don't the even menagerie. Think they, they did the menagerie and then they yeah. released the, the one in 86. I don't even think they showed that in the menagerie episode, him doing that stuff. No, they didn't. No. Because no. they changed the character of Spock. Because yeah. they... they they looked at the character of Spock and they realized they had something. R.I.P. Leonard Nimoy. And it took uh, Spock a while to figure out the character of Spock. But so. they said one, one thing that we've got to do with Spock in the in the Kirk iteration is uh, he's an alien. He has to be alien. So the best way that they thought to show alien was to remove oh, his emotions. Dude, that's why it's getting a season two. Because they, they started filming season two right after Strange New World season one. So it's been filmed for a while because oh, it right. has Kirk in it. I forgot it has oh, Kirk in shit. it. And the guy Bisexual doesn't look anything like Kirk. Bisexual that guy looks Kirk. nothing like Kirk. Nothing like Kirk. It's a terrible, terrible casting. And he's like, uh, Kirk was 34 when he became captain of the Enterprise. He reminds this me is, of like a... 10 years before that, so he should be 24. The guy, and the guy looks 40. He's 39 <laughs> he years old. He looks like a vacuum salesman or something. He does. <laughs> yeah. It's like Kirk's going to be 24 that time in this. Is fucked. Uh, it's fucked. Uh, X-Ray Girl, could you read a couple? I got to run and grab something real quick. Read. Sure. Mr. Bug Super Chat. I'll be right back. Mr. Bug, uh, for $5, says, hail everyone. Also, hail to my boss, Flash. Don't let stoners use popular IPs like the Ninja Turtles. Never give them enough rope to hang you with. Yeah, everyone check out Mr. Bug. Makes my shorts for me. Ah, uh, okay. They end up okay. hanging themselves, to be honest. Yeah. Who hung themselves? I do. Oh, it says never give them, never give them enough rope to hang you, like in the form of letting oh. people fuck your IPs up and stuff. But ultimately, they're the ones 
that get fucked over, it's their money, right? Like a lot of the time. Ultimately, they... yeah. Yeah, I, as good. I've said multiple times, we don't own these IP. We cannot be gatekeepers. <laughs> yeah. You can watch whatever you want. I am allowed. Yeah. As is allowed, Yellow Flash is allowed, Mahler is really long and allowed, and even <laughs> Extra Girl to criticize whatever the fuck we want on this platform. And we have every right to be here. And anybody in the audience who agrees with an audience we all share with a lot of YouTubers, they have the right to be here and their opinion too. It's all we've ever asked. That's all it ever used to be in fandom. It's yeah. the recent iteration of the wacko authoritarians who just want to silence any fucking dissent because it upsets them and that's well that, then life is going to be really long and hard for you it's going to be long and freaking hard if little words upset and you speaking of be, that go ahead no no, no i was going to say it's just gonna be one word which is going to well, follow you around for the rest of your life unemployed there was some report that came out i didn't i didn't read i just kind of looked through it a little bit but apparently a lot of employers are passing on people that use they them pronouns. <gasps> what? Hmm. You mean somebody that actually puts down on pen and paper, pen and paper. Uh, a tell that tells you that they're a fucking lunatic. Uh, they're deciding not to uh, to go with them for their companies. That's insane. I'm going to tell you right now. If I was ever in the position of hiring someone at a, a uh, at a job, if you put your pronouns on anything, I would probably throw it right into the trash. It goes yep. right into the the filing cabinet. You, I employers the round see you filing cabinet on the floor. Yeah, <laughs> employers see you as a lawsuit, potential yes. lawsuit. Yes. Yep. Like even that's why uh, it's great being a one man band. I don't have to hire anyone. Even the the woke uh, wine aunt. Who works in HR? I totally took that from your boy Zach, which is great. Who every Marvel movie is made for won't hire you because they'll go, We totally support you, but they would be a potential problem for this corporation. Yeah. <laughs> ah, damn it. I missed it. Some, some, somebody in chat went, No slash thank you. <laughs> I was going <laughs> to highlight yeah. that. That was good. That was good. <laughs> that was very, very good. Uh, right, we've, got, we've got uh, CJ O'Neill for $100. That the card season three is a great start. Hope uh, it's the beginning of a shift back to good Trek. It could be, CJ. It could be, but I don't think it will be. No, I totally plan on dipping right back out of Star Trek yep. after the show. <laughs> well, unless I'm not this, Strange New Worlds, no. unless this guy gets a series, I'm if if he does something because this has been so good. And I think it'll stick to it, considering what everyone that's seen it says. Uh, I would consider watching something that he makes, but that would be it. He did a series for sci-fi a few years ago that I liked very much. It's very different from the movie that I adore, okay? It's basically a sci-fi sci series of 12 Monkeys, but I enjoyed 12 Monkeys. It was fun. Yes. Oh, it was, was actually good? Show. Yeah, yeah it's made good. that. It, it's I, good, yeah. It's got Todd I, Stashwick I who plays out. Shaw in it, playing basically the same character. It's sexy. Oh my God, it's got this one woman in her like this sexy not Nazi thing shooting. <laughs> it's fucking great. It's great. It's a good fun time traveling romp, and uh, and it has a good ending. It's four seasons, and you like it. So, yeah, sexy Nazis, Mueller. Well, one girl, but she's disguised. She actually kills the Nazis. Sorry, spoiler. But uh, Malakot, 63 for $20. Has anyone seen the funny Transformers video by Flash Glitz? It's six years old, but holds up. It's only four, oh, four minutes and 45 seconds is too long. Sorry. Uh, Megatron gets shamed for hitting RC <laughs> informs the Offendicons to defend <laughs> Optimus Prime. I think I've seen that. <laughs> I, I don't I've know how that. Flash gets us still on YouTube. The amount of offensive shit they've uploaded is wonderful. You should see their um, their like Pinocchio if it were realistic video. So not Pinocchio. Um, fuck, they they did a bunch of Disney films if they were realistic. I think they've done four, and um, some of the shit in there is hilarious. I fully recommend it. Vince and repeat for one hundred Australian dollars, Australia. 
Have you watched the eight minute video on YouTube where Nathan Fillion remembers Ryan? It is on Ryan Reynolds YouTube channel and it is hilarious. It is po it, 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 is it possible to watch now? Hail you sexy beast. Again, like eight minutes is, is too no. long for us. Yeah, we can't do eight <laughs> minutes. Like two minutes is max. We can do something before people start getting it also reclaimed and copyrighted and yeah, like, yeah, all these yeah. kind of things. Yeah. yeah, that almost killed the whole of the last real BBC. It was horrible. Uh, yeah. yeah, dude. We showed a couple of things and man, we paid for it. <laughs> or as the first did. time Disney's yeah, yeah, I've me, heard of Disney me. copywriting. <laughs> Royal we <laughs> <laughs> I know the first time I've heard of that. That's first time I heard of it too. They released it. They did. They did release it after a day. Uh, Malakot 63 has gifted five neurotic memberships for $25. Thank you. But other people's haven't, by the way. Can I just say? What was that? Other people's haven't had theirs released. Uh, did Polly get his released? Latino Slant? He's out there. I know he got hit. He's a good dude. Ink uh, Drunk 3PO got hit as well. <laughs> Oh, I didn't know Latino Slant got hit. I would have put yeah. that in my video. I, I just, as and drunk, I saw got hit. Yeah, I don't know if his got lifted or not. Um, Ethan Flash for 20 Canadian pesos. <laughs> you have to watch out for Flash. He'll beat the brakes off you. But if, <laughs> But can a man who cried while watching Gundam beat the brakes off of anybody? I think so. Thanks. Thanks, Ethan. <laughs> it's like, uh, you know what? The internet is specifically for never and cry down <laughs> and cry. That's like watery eyes. Little watery eye. Yeah, hey, he cried. hey, Transformers, the movie. There wasn't a dry, no do, oh, no dry cried. eyes. Don't even lie <laughs> yeah, about yeah. it. Okay. I cried my eyes. <laughs> Don't even lie about it. Oh, that came out in 4K too. You got that? It did. I got yes, it. Yes, I got yes. it. Looks great, uh, doesn't it? Fucking oh weird. yeah, yeah, yeah. Here it is. It's here. It's here. Yeah, Dude, yeah. I've been I'm, on the uh, 4K list. Yeah. My kid is uh, on this huge 80s movies kick. So we just watched. I think the one of the most 80s movies ever, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Oh wow! And, and mm -hmm. he wants to watch everything now, and which is great. I'm like, oh, threaten me with a good time. <laughs> Fuck YouTube. I'm just gonna do 80s movie marathons with my kid. Till the end of time i'm currently watching uh the transformers cartoon it's I good like the idea of going back and forth between that and clarkson's farm like i oh. would i would like yeah. to watch the so this is a very interesting history that i learned a few weeks ago about transformers and the japanese versions of yeah. this and how it eventually Star deviates and stuff. yeah and becomes its own thing in japan i would like to watch that it did in the uk as well in the comics oh really the, U the uk comics deviated from marvel comics and we started creating our own transformer stories here in the uk yeah i'd like to well it's right i always right? find that did you know they did that with spider-man in mexico yes in mexico yep. yeah that's Gwen crazy Stacey. i'd like to read yeah. those i'd like to read those translated yeah because in japan with transformers the 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 leader is star saber and and uh haslabs just recently did a a uh a thing for star saber and I think Devil Saw is the, the Megatron, and they did they did those two characters, and also the Takara masterpieces. You can now get a Star Saber Takara masterpiece as well. Um, yeah, and then yeah, in the UK, the yeah the comic, I, I, the comics are some of them are pricey now. Oh yeah, yeah. So they'd be really yeah. rare. Yeah. Especially have, the uh, the uh, Optimus Prime and Ultra Flash, Magnus Galvatron stuff. Mexico, I have a, a bunch of foreign spider-man like a bunch i can't understand a word that's so is marvel uh, i just spent the whole there's a whole timeline where gwen stacy stayed alive and uh her and peter i think got married yeah el hombre orreño spider-man the uh, I, I, I've seen I, when I found that out, I went and looked it up, and the art looks great. Yeah, like, it looks just as good as it did over here. You used to be able to, well, back when you can go to Tijuana without a a, a, a passport and getting beheaded and kidnapped. Um, yeah. you used to be able to get those little the, the there were thicker comic books. Yeah, you 
you know, back in the day. Back in the day. Uh, back in the day. Hey, I just want to acknowledge that uh, it's under it now, but for over two and a half hours, we held 10,000 people, dude. So Woo! thank you, guys. You thank are freaking you. awesome. Damn. Over 10,000. Nice. Oh, just a soldier. 10, Juggernauts for $50. <laughs> says to Az, damn you. <laughs> Your Sons of the Forest streams caused me to have a dream last night about trying to figure out how to finish the house you're building. <laughs> I'm still trying to do that. We're in getting brain. close. We're getting close. <laughs> you see, you see close the Wait, right here. Right there. Right. Uh, let me make yours. I have his first appearance. Did you? Oh, yeah, I can see him. That's such that a looks like a figure. fucking penis. Fucking love Juggernaut. Wow. I don't know what I'm kind of you know that, that you looks have like, as, but that, that is that a like six fun. is that a six scale like yes it is it's huge oh and man it's killer I've only got one I just have the Scarlet Spider there's a Did you guys tempt me into buying so much of that stuff there's a Colossus <laughs> one so it looks kind of like the X Men they're from Deadpool so they're knockoffs from from Deadpool too oh. I just wish they do yeah. more of the comics like it's comic always the movies versions, versions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I just got this kind this just kind of dang it where's yeah. mine. A dark side. How come, you, and, how, come, how come your stupid island gets shit before us? <laughs> Best he's, uh, he's, by the way, Gareth, <laughs> his other head with the, uh, you know, the flames coming out of his eyes. If you take the head off, there's actually a switch. And if you switch Maybe. it, the foot battery's in and it lights yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've got our dark side. God, mm. I want that so bad. I know I ordered it. I want, I, I want that 90s Cyclops you got back there. Oh, you can get that from Sideshow, dude. Yeah. Is it still in print? I, See, but if I bought, well, here's the problem. If I bought that, then I'm gonna sorry. want. I got that. I'm gonna want '90s Wolverine. I'm gonna want the whole fucking team. That's the problem. And then all, all of a sudden, because these things are expensive, they're a couple well, hundred you want, dollars. If you want piece. a '90s Wolverine that's that's affordable, get the Medicom one. It's under two hundred dollars. It's not as good as Hot Toys, but it looks very comic accurate. The Medicom one. So real action hero. But Wolverine. I can't stop there, Gary. I would need Storm and Gambit. Of course not. Rogue. No. I would want that Listen, whole Jim I, Lee lineup. I am Mr. Restraint when it comes to action figures, by the way. I know when to stop. <laughs> okay. Gary, you got the I wrong just... background on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Restraint. Hey, <laughs> totally. Can I get my. Uh... That's what I'm known for. Yeah. You know? <laughs> get my, uh, you know, who out. Someone this, in chat this, earlier ooh, was like, Gary's week. been bagging board and comics for a whole year. <laughs> I know, and I'm not even close to being done. <laughs> Uh, oh, oh, by the way, Garrett finally oh. got me the stuff from the Orlando meetup. That's awesome, as and Let's uh, see. Andy Masterson. He oh, has yeah. uh, like talons on his toes. Yeah, this is his uh, cool. this is freeze costume. Where he's yeah, you don't want him stepping on your feet. fucking toe. No. That's gonna hurt. So these, gonna, gonna those orange, they're actually heat. They're heat. Uh, yes. Yeah, cool. Oh, cool. Cool, All right, cool, now, cool. No, no, yeah, no, over here. Because somebody made thick this. Thick ties save lives. Thick ties save thick lives. Ties. All right. You, you got as All much right. restraint with figures as I do with old comics. Oh, <laughs> I got no, I got, I, I'm trying so hard. I'm trying so hard right now. Hang on. Since uh, not listening to me. Uh, Andy Masterson, dude. Thank hey. you. So he gave me this at, at Orlando. Gandalf the guy. <laughs> yeah, box and everything. So this is in my theater room. Uh, okay. Somebody said this, this is fucking amazing. Hang on. Where'd it go? Hitchhiker video Aye. game. This is one of the first video games like ever. Dude, Pinnick. Nice. Oh, oh my gosh. I can't. Yeah, this is a. Um, Freaking brilliant. I remember playing this back when I was a wee little lad before they invented the wheel. Um, it came from, hang on, I can tell you. I have the note. I should totally dox him, but I won't. Uh, Sean, thank you, Sean. You're beautiful, Sean. And thank you. Oh, another thing. Do you remember when Marvel used to have a restaurant at Universal? And they had Marvel Mania? I got this i still have Ooh. napkins from it that when i went there 
but uh, Marvel Mania restaurant. Yeah, good times. If you go to Universal now, while it's still there, it's got a whole Marvel section that is not Disney at all. It is That's trapped great. in the nineties. It's fucking great. It's. I'm so surprised great. that they still get to keep that. Like, it's licensed out. I got. I've got to take my kid to it. I've got to. Because if I, I mean. There, that's Disney letting their competitor park have that. I, I'm surprised they don't try to yank that from it's, them. It was something that was in the the, the licensing, and they can renew it how, however long. They have the whole coaster. They have a Spider Man ride, which is Spider Man the animated series ride, which is great. It's, it, and in the gift shop, they had a like a a Black Panther onesie or something like that with a white dude modeling yeah, it, which was yeah. the funniest shit I've ever <laughs> seen in my life. I about pissed myself when I saw that. <laughs> so good. I'm going to go back as soon as I'm just waiting for Nintendo Land to get built in Orlando, and then I'm jetting back there to go go to Nintendo Land. Well, you, Universal you know, Universal is going to overtake Disney eventually. I, as a more popular park because Disney is so outdated and dirty looking like universal's up to date. They have more modern stuff with a uh, Harry Potter and, and they're, they're, they're more accurate Nintendo. Marvel than Disney because they can't even have like the, their new captain America's black Falcon, captain America at their Avengers stuff. Oh, I think they got miss Marvel in there. I know it's, but you no, go, you're an Avenger. Hey, uh, I know you're a busy guy, but don't forget about Orlando, the meetup in October. You should totally come down. We'll hang. Yeah, that's I could probably make plans for that because uh, Horror Nights is pretty great. Horror Nights, Horror Nights, <laughs> wow. Horror Nights. Okay, wow, <laughs> How, uh, my favorite Universal's kind of night. Horror Horror Nights. Nights. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of night I like. Well, right. On oh, Halloween, it kind of is like that, I suppose. I posted you a, an article, Gary. I think it's kind of interesting, especially okay. the. I can share the first bigger paragraph. Just basically, quickly subs up what star wars was and what it turned into but there's also which, just confirmation about which um, one well, well let's go to the headline I mean, first oh, can i see oh, yeah, what it sure. is thank you <laughs> 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 oh star wars shakeup kevin feige and patty jenkins movies shelved taika watiti looking to star in his own film. Oh. oh no so, what a fucking is, isn't it brilliant Did the only thing you drop? know about taika watiti star wars film is i want to be in it it's like yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um. So, what did I say last week, folks? I said look for a lot of stuff to get outright canceled, shelved, and never spoken of again. It has begun. The woke ho Hollywood apocalypse, but has begun. And yeah, they want to do a bit of like history before they go into the specifics of like the shelving and stuff. And so this uh, this article goes, down. yeah. Um. Wait. Do you want to read it or should I? You read it. Your voice is better. That's ridiculous. Which, which paragraph? Like what number? Paragraph? Oh, well, the first three, right? So when first John three, Favreau okay. stepped onto the red carpet for season three premiere of A Mandalorian on February 28th, the Disney Plus show's creator and executive producer was feeling nostalgic. It's been a while since we've all been together here like this, Favreau told Variety, evoking the November 2019 premiere for the launch of the show and off uh, Disney Plus itself. It was before the first episode aired. At that time... The Mandalorian was a scrappy land speeder in the vast Star Wars galaxy, nipping at the heels of The Rise of Skywalker, the culminating feature film from director J.J. Abrams that was expected just a month later to obliterate the box office like a cinematic Death Star. Instead, The Mandalorian became a global sensation thanks to the incandescent cuteness of Baby Yoda blasting Disney Plus into the light speed with 26.5 million subscribers in the first six weeks. The Rise of Skywalker, on the other hand, imploded in spectacular fashion. The film earning just half the gross of 2015's The Force Awakens. I think that's just funny. Yes. It like, <laughs> it's just like, yes, we annihilated the IP. Yes. That's what yes, we, we did. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never then, understand it. Imagine having that. You had pretty much a completed outline and from George Lucas, and we're going to do it better. <laughs> <laughs> what do they have to say for why Mandalorian's popular? Baby Yoda's cute. Oh, <laughs> like nice. all right. Hold up, wait a minute. Something ain't right. Yeah, and uh, obviously the rest goes on to explain. 
Could... They found out that Kevin Feige's project, by the way, his Star Wars film is supposed to be written by Michael Waldron. Ah! <laughs> I know, no! right? It's fucking oh, unbelievable. Yes! And Michael Waldron has said, like, he's looking forward to it because he gets to write a story that's not tied to anything that came before. As though that fucking matters to that man. Like, <laughs> and in any case, apparently that's been shelved. The Patty Jenkins has been shelved. And all we know about Tigers is that he wants to be in it. It's like, cool. Uh, uh, what about the Rianne Johnson trilogy? Anything about that nope, in uh, the article? <laughs> It's totally happening, dude. It's it's totally happening. He's making Uh, Knives Out 3. uh, Yeah. show he just released. He's not X-Ray Girl, could you find Drunk 3PO's tweet with the Star Wars Celebration poster, please? Which says it all. Like, I I fully believe that they want to retcon that ahsoka is like the jedi over luke oh yeah she's the she's the most important one in that she's in the middle well her show finished uh, filming right so that'll be out and i'm sure (laughs) sure she's hey the mandalorian's out everybody's talking about it oh that is one of the Uh, uh, posters uh, i have ever seen (laughs) okay how in the fuck did they manage to get the uncanny valley from the bad cgi (laughs) Into a fucking poster <laughs> <laughs> with Luke. <laughs> like, what the fuck? He I was like, gonna, I was gonna say AI art made it, but it would look better. Uh, it would look better. Like that looks like dead Luke Skywalker. Like he is robot dead. Luke dead. Skywalker. Yeah, he is dead. Yeah. We, well, we we called him it since we saw him Skinwalker Luke, right? And there's a lot of yes these going around. Luke Skinwalker. That's what he is. <laughs> Luke Skinwalker. Uh, Ahsoka is prominent because oh my god, god it's a girl and uh her shows up soon and there's Mando and as proof Mando's nothing without baby Yoda apparently. without baby Yoda he's got to like why is he fighting with the little fucking baby in his hand <laughs> <laughs> he's gotta show baby Yoda hey, remember when Marvel had pregnant women background. fighting oh yeah <laughs> oh god <laughs> remember when a woman gave up to another woman because she's a woman wait I've got an idea. Remember when the Nova Force character uh, ran into battle and the villain was more concerned about her baby than her? (laughs) Than she was? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's like, uh, you're pregnant. I don't know if I want to double kill on my body count here. Uh, yeah, that. Uh, thanks, Drunk Three PO, for sharing that because you know he never gets a shout out for anything. Why well, was the um, baby Zoe Quinn talking about? I'm 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 here right now. Uh, you are. Hey, it was really fun hanging out with you in Orlando. By the way, uh, <laughs> Drunk Three PO. Yeah, I, I've seen yeah. your butt because of the plushy yellow flash. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, can you show that Star Trek poster? I really want oh, to the one that. without Kirk? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah me- I mean, this is the guy that built the brand. Let's just leave him off of it. You know. Yeah, let me... Uh, give me a moment. Captain Kirk, who's that guy? We got to wrap up. Uh, who, yeah, who is he? Just, I am picking up my son from school today. I just Kirk? remembered. My alarm just who? reminded me of that. I'm like, oh, yeah, I got to pick up my kid. From school. Who? Uh, Robert Meyer Burnett. Robert Meyer Burnett tweeted it but he tweets like a 14 year old girl oh my god uh, robert do you want me to read a soup while you're doing that please do oh here it uh, is i found it okay that was... okay never mind no read it read it oh okay it. uh finnegan on Streamlabs for 2110 says i too got slapped with the same warning by amazon in be well uh, one out of five reviews saying the show was boring the characters were badly written no swearing no racism appealed and threatened canceling prime two hours later my review got reinstated and they apologized oh Ooh. got him to bend that knee and look what ship is prominent oh my god that fucking can opener it's hideous that <laughs> it's ship so hideous it, but it's, yeah. it's, a pizza <laughs> it's a pizza cutter <laughs> It does look like a pizza cutter. With its Wi-Fi (laughs) nacelles. Okay, so you look at this um, from the great uh, Robert Meyer Burnett, uh, Paramount Plus promo. While Picard is going on, quite frankly, the most people have been talking about Star Trek since they've launched all this shit has been now. Like, Picard Season 3 has had the most conversation surrounding it, the most debate around it, than any fucking show 
Sure, there was some interest when Star Trek Discovery came out, but after the first episode, it died. But people are still talking because it's good. Because it's good. And there's, hey, there's people who are mad, and that's fine, too. You have, uh, like I've said before, if you're out on this, nobody's going to blame you, man. Nobody. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. I haven't watched most of it, which is why I'm watching this. Like, yeah, I I watched one or two episodes of Picard and then dipped. A little bit of Strange Worlds dipped. None of Discovery or the cartoon thing. They're Rick and Morty Star Trek. Oh, that is, that, that is actually vandalism. It is. That is. <clears throat> that is cultural vandalism. Uh, but uh, uh, Mrs. Nerdrotic was was the same. She watched like an episode of Picard, didn't watch any Discovery, none of this stuff. So she went into Picard season three, and that's pretty much all she's seen. And yeah, yeah she freaking loves it, man. Um, I think those are the people that are going to enjoy it the most. <laughs> yep, I agree. <laughs> I haven't watched any of it. That's why I'm liking it so much. I've been burned because <clears> I, I said, fuck your shows. There is a a really good joke <clears throat> that they use with, with Rafi and Seven being clam bumpers, but uh, you'll have to just wait for that. Um, former, because they broke them up, because it's the most accurate thing lesbians do in Hollywood to break up. You well, I told you Seven left Chakotay because he beat the shit out of her. As Remember when we were talking about the USS U-Haul? <laughs> USS U. Yeah. We, some somebody <laughs> needs to make Rafi the captain of the USS U. Hall. <laughs> it's just full of X's. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so we have this promotional picture from Paramount Plus, which features the the Discovery and the Enterprise. Is that D D? Um, there's a D in a, and this stupid Discovery crap. There's somebody missing from this. Pretty mm, prominent. Wesley Crusher. That's it. Would you want to space with me? How could you not have Kirk on your promotional? I mean, that is, you can tell it's deliberate when you don't put effing Kirk on your promotional. He is I mean, and nothing Trek. against nothing against the her, but I mean, come on. Or even the cartoon character, like any of these. Discovery. I, I understand they're doing it because they're they're current brands, but to not have him on there is incredible. Oh, Spock's not current brand. Uhura's not current brand. Uh, DS9's not current brand. Uh, Janeway. I mean, you could argue Janeway's in this prodigal cartoon. So Kirk should one hundred percent be on there, and Kirk should be front and center because Kirk is fucking Star Trek. Yeah, a hundred percent. And and yeah, they clearly have a mix of old and new. It's not like they've left him out because he's not in the current shows or anything. Doesn't happen. With Arch is not current. It also shows that, uh, the, uh, not Terry Metalis, but the, the bean counters in charge, very petty, very petty to, to deliberately leave off Kirk. That is some petty thin Even skin out. shit. Um, they hate Kirk says Robert Marbonette. And I totally agree. I totally agree. Well, he's a, he's a straight white womanizing man. Like yep. he's he's too toxic for them. But and it's more like it's more that uh, William Shatner is too fucking based there. there that like, too. But I mean, Kirk. I mean, he was just slaying bitches in the original series, right? He didn't. He Every didn't, episode, not not huge. That's a that's a that's a miss. Oh, he was that's always a, he was always taking his shirt he was, off. <laughs> trying to hit on women all the time. Come on. But he, what, he you know what he wasn't though? Is this he he wasn't this reckless captain. No. Like at all. Like, oh he yeah. Was, you know, like, he's a good it, he's a good captain. Yep. Uh but he's still no, a ladies' man. Well yeah. Why, why Dude, not? I'm willing to watch anything where a man is with a woman right now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. Uh no Zaku boy in two parts for sixty nine dollars. Sixty nine for sixty nine. <laughs> Uh, those who sees, little college boys' asses. Who sees into the hearts of men and the undergarments of women? Peeping Tom. Apocalypse Now, a disease that will shrink the bus of all real women and rob the world of God's gift to men, <laughs> leaving only lies in its wake. Can Tom block the spread long enough to curate the cure for straight tit doom? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Never 
I refuse to leave you live in a flat chested world. I know yeah. there a world where is men and women are all not flat flat chested. Flat flesh. Mr. Burns. Flat Mr. Burns for 34. Leave off the booze, expert. 27. First time super chat. Wait. Oh, wow. It's back, baby. I pumped the volume on that. Wow. Yeah. Uh, found you all last year just before being diagnosed with stage <gasps> three melanoma. Oh, no. Oh. Uh, thanks to modern medicine in beating it. Good. Uh, nice. Real BBC, okay. FNT, and The Drinker have helped me uh, keep my spirits up as I fight hail. Oh, that's good to hear. The that only is not stage easy. four we want around here, sunshine, <clears throat> is Marvel. We don't even want that. So, no, we've had it. Yeah, we've all had Marvel stage. But uh, if we could help you ease the pain a little bit, uh, thank you. I mean, thanks for watching and fight and, like lion, mate. Yeah, yeah, keep fighting. Glad you beat you it. Got this, uh, Nicholas Cruiser for twenty dollars. Don the robe. Don the robe. My Gandalf robe is downstairs. I can't don it. Giggity. I thought we were going to say, remember the dawn. And Nicholas Cruiser for $20, hashtag stop gingerside. I agree. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. I got a couple more minutes before I have to get out of here. And I, dude, if my alarm didn't go off, I would have totally forgot to pick up my kid. <laughs> Somebody was very upset that I said Kirk was a ladies' man. All caps told me to fuck off. What? <laughs> um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Flash. I apologize. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, welcome to the internet. We just Kirk was a ladies' man, man, but I think yeah. I mean it's more. Riker is more of a ladies' ladies' man than him. Riker is way yeah, more of a ladies' Kirk is still man. Than Kirk. A ladies' man. He's an alpha male, definitely. Absolutely. And uh, he did definitely have some runs with the ladies in the original series. Yes, he did. And I mean, his shirt off and he's walking through the ship with his shirt off. I'm like, you can put your shirt back on to walk around the ship. You don't need to keep it off. <laughs> he's he a to show it off. <laughs> Come on, it's not an insult to him. He's, he's uh, No, I was like, I'm okay with this. Please keep it off. <laughs> uh, Striker 24 times 24 for $5 says, okay, Gary, you win. I should end, just end it right there. A Marvel video. <laughs> oh. Arc made Johnny Blaze the villain to prop up Robbie Reyes. For the record, I think Carter Slade is the best Ghost Rider. Uh, oh, the OG Ghost Ghost Rider. Mm, yeah, I mean, <sighs> Danny Ketch is good. He, he like he had good stories, good runs. Johnny Blaze was the first for me. That's all. But uh, yeah, Carter Slade, dude. Oh, I got the, such a great design. And right, an great idea. design, great, great character, this Ghost Rider, and I love both those movies. Don't care what people say; they suck, but I like them. They're 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 bad. They're bad fun. They're bad fun. The second one is particularly like bad fun. Particularly yeah. bad fun, but good. Uh, Marksman, ten dollars. Don't know if you guys remembered a Kickstarter I shared last year for a fan film based on the Stalker game series. Raised three hundred fifty thousand dollars. Wow. Holy shit. Uh, Raw Cut currently stands at one hour. They are editing and expecting to release it in late summer, early fall. Well, congrats on wow. that. killing it, by yeah. the way. That's insane. Holy shit. Uh, when do you think Marvel gives Ghost Rider an electric motorcycle? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, I thought a more of an electric the wheelchair. Yeah. <laughs> I am getting one of those electric bicycles, dude. I like those, but... Uh, I like petrol. Big fan of the petrol. All right. Well, I'm sorry, but one more we got to go. I was just trying to pick it. Is there anything for? Can I pick it? Yes, you can. Can I Flash. pick it? Uh, waffle for 30 shekels. 30 shekels says, I say we want, we should invent a new unit of time. We should call it Gary. Uh, one Gary equals 300 seconds. Also, as please stop using the curse. Twat waffle, I find it highly offensive as a waffle person myself. Okay. Mm, I do like uh, waffles too. Uh, I just want to say that anyone that yeah. asked me to stop saying twat waffle is a twat waffle. No, I think, yeah, I think, uh, I think as bringing that back into the vernacular is probably one of the best things he's ever done. Uh, that might be the person. best thing that's ever happened in life. It, in life. Probably. Not bad. Gary, when in Vegas, you might want to visit Zach Baggins Haunted Museum 
close to downtown Vegas. I know where that is. Uh, Dad's Den of Pop Culture for $5. We might go that. That might be a fun thing to do. Uh, so, okay. So we're going to wrap it up. Let's go around the horn. Uh, we will get the rest. Oh, God, on a very long square up. Uh, and I will be back. What is today? Tuesday? Tomorrow with Chris Gore, who was in the chat. Hi, Hail. Chris. Oh, hail, Chris Gore. We love Chris Gore. Yeah, good man. We love Chris Gore. Uh, X-Ray Girl, what yes. you got coming up? <laughs> Nothing that zen, because I'm going to be playing Sons of the Forest. Um, which, as, are you playing later or no? Uh, when are you going on? Uh, I have a call I have to make, and then shortly after. So, half an hour at least, maybe? Okay, I'll go, uh, I'll go powder my nose, and, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, we know, that's a bunch of coke. You're gonna do a bunch of fucking coke. <laughs> Wait, what? I did not know that. <laughs> Girls powder their noses with, like... Yeah, when guys say it, they're doing a bunch of coke okay. in the bathroom. Well, I'm, I'm learning. I don't think do guys. Ass. Oh my god! Uh, well, yeah, it's called butt chugging. What? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, this is perfectly normal. Up, around, and down. <gasps> I'm learning. All right, uh, Mahler, <laughs> what you got coming up? Um, Mandalorian coverage on tomorrow. Oof. Last of Us episode eight on Friday. Oh. And then we're actually planning something, hopefully a little bit different slash special for EFAP on Saturday. Not sure yet. But that's that, yeah. There you go. Uh, as uh, well, I'm going to be doing Sons of the Forest in about half an hour, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, tomorrow, uh, I don't know. I I need. I I might take a day tomorrow. I might take a day because uh, oh, I probably won't. But there's a few things I want to do around the house, you know. So um, this is this is getting boring real quick. Uh, it's Thursday, <laughs> <laughs> Thursday, hot toys on Thursday with George the Giant Slayer at six p.m. UK time. Friday, Friday night tights with Who's... Gavin McGinnis. Gavin McGinnis. Oh, <laughs> talk to him about video games. I'm gonna try. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna. Bring what does it all he up? think about The Last of Us? <laughs> that should be a spicy show. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready, baby. Uh Flash, what do you got coming up? Uh daily videos and every Saturday Flashcast. And on the 18th, we will have Graham Lo Nolan on Flashcast. What? Awesome. It's amazing. I'm rereading uh Nightfall and nice. I'm going to make everybody else read it that's on the show, and we're all going to talk about it. Hopefully. That is great. Let's we'll see if you can get him to read it. That'll be, that'll he doesn't need to read he, He's the man behind it. Yeah, that's true. Well, I can't wait to watch that. I can't wait to watch that. Uh, Flashcast, what time does it start? It'll be at 10 p.m. EST. 9 p.m. Central? Eastern Standard Time. There you go. 9 p.m. Central. and Oh, yeah, 9 p.m. Central. Central. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So... Uh, thanks for coming on, Flash. Uh, you're welcome back anytime. Love you, man. Uh, yeah, thanks for having uh, me on. One of it's the fun. best YouTubers out there. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, what do I have coming up? Uh, top five video. Almost finished with it. And tomorrow, Nooner with Chris Gore. Thursday morning, 10 a.m., I will be reviewing Star Trek Picard Episode 4. As you're more than welcome if you want to come on. And uh, I Doesn't drop for us until Friday. Oh, really? Mm. We get it Friday in the UK. Uh, Dave Cullen has the invite out too, but you're welcome, as even if you just want to, you know, have it ruined. Have it ruined. <laughs> 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 and then Friday, Gavin McGinnis. So, and whatever dumb Hollywood thing uh, happens, I will cover it. I will cover it. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for leaving super chats and donations. You help keep the lights on. We appreciate you. Thank you to the Mod Rodics for doing a great job. See you next week on Az's channel. Same time. Ciao, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.